Welcome to our select board meeting here for January 28th. We'll call the meeting to order. Um, we'd like to approve the agenda first. Is there any adds or subtracts? Uh, I would mention one thing if we get time. Um, just a brief update on uh, the new trooper that repla replaced Richard, if that's a possibility. And yeah, okay. Other than that, I don't have any other changes. Uh, take a motion to approve. Move to approve the agenda. I'll second that. Okay. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Consent agenda items are minutes from the January 21st meeting and uh, liquor licenses for Shaw's and the Thatcher, Thatcher Hill LLC. I'll make a motion that we uh, approve the consent agenda items as listed. I'll second. All right, any further discussion? Being done, all those that approve, say aye. 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 Public, anybody here from the public that wishes to speak? I would like to. Okay. Uh, it's to do with the budget, but uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to stay for the full meeting. Uh, Why don't you come right up here, Everett? How things go? Thank you, Chris. Yeah. Thank you. Com comfortable chair tonight. Neighbors helping neighbors. <laughs> Can you hear me all right? Sure. <laughs> My name is Everett Coffey. I've lived in Waterbury since 1962, and uh, I've served in a public capacity as a trustee, village president, raised a great family with my wife, four adult kids, all married, and grandkids and great-grandkids. But why I'm here tonight is because a couple of reasons, and I don't want to take that much time, but uh, I'm very doubtful that the figures that were in the Waterbury record last week, no fault of theirs, they were presented by Mr. DeSanto on a number of people that are using this library. Doing some calculation, there would be a requirement to reach that many people, and maybe there's a counter somewhere that counts two for every one, I don't know that, but a person, one person, a one minute, Try that again. Every hour, 19 people would have to come through the library doors to get the numbers that are in the paper. And I didn't believe it last year, and I don't believe it this year. And I, it just uh, troubles me when what appears to me to be uh, false figures, and in my opinion, that is only to get uh, additional funds or whatever. Uh, I don't use the library much. I'm not opposed to it. However, I don't think we need to add another librarian for 20 hours a week, and some of you may disagree with me, and that's okay. Uh, the other thing that concerns me is how little or how much effect does the economic development director have on the future of Waterbury with new businesses and so on. I don't know if she did or did not have any effect on the uh, potential of McGillicuddy's coming to where Avads was, but I do know that there have been other people that have gotten new tenants, and uh, she played no active role in it. She's really under the control of revitalizing Waterbury, and I think there's some conflict of interest there sometimes. So just in closing, I would encourage the board, maybe not agree everything that Chris said in the Waterbury record last week, but 99% of it, is a fact, and we've got to face reality, common sense, and affordability. We've got a lot of young couples in town every night. The Pig, the Reservoir, Bluestone, et cetera, et cetera, are busy. A lot of those people are out of town, skiers and so forth. But that is not enough, in my opinion, business taxes and with coffee roasters questionable, are they going to be here or not? Uh, we need to buckle down our belts and may have to sacrifice a little bit for a year or two. But we've got an awful lot of roads, sidewalks that need to be done. 
And I do appreciate the fact that the sidewalk on Winooski Street did get repaired and replaced. And there's a lot of good things going on in Waterbury. But I think we've got to take a real sharp look at what is going on and cut where there's possibilities. And I think the additional library person is not a necessity. And I wonder really about uh, the uh, information or the additional businesses that we have in Waterbury based on the economic development uh, advisor. And I think she's a fine young lady, but I don't know if we are getting a dollar for a dollar there. With that said, if you've got questions of me, I'd try and answer them. If not, I'd go back and sit down. Can you think of anything right now, Everett? Okay, well, I'll be here for a little while at least. Okay, appreciate your comments. Bill? Just, just two comments, uh, not questions. Um, and thank you for coming, Everett. I appreciate your concerns. Um, there is a... There is a uh, counter in the library that counts people that go in and out. And uh, I know that, I mean, I haven't looked at the computer, but there is a counter. They know that they've got to, you know, divide by two because people come in and go out and it's an electric guy and it clicks you both going in and out. So they understand that. So I did want you to know there is a counter in the library. Um, and. Uh, I don't know what it reads, but it's there. Um, with regard to the economic development director, again, all good points. Um, I would just remind the board that um, the money that we're paying for the economic development director's position is municipal money, but the economic development director is scheduled along with others at revitalizing Waterbury and municipal staff to be spending a lot of time on trying to help the public and businesses through the Main Street Reconstruction Project. Uh, we'll be getting reimbursed on the order of probably over $100,000 from the state for, for those efforts. So um, we're not getting reimbursed for the $52,000 or whatever it is that we pay RW for the Economic Development Director. But if they don't have that position, it's one less person to do what we've been asking them to do. So, and excuse me, but one, one last point. I'll just run away by the mic. Uh, I didn't say it, but uh, the figures and the number of people are based on the hours that the library is actually open, and that's why I would uh, strongly question those figures, because that would be, as I said before, 19 people per hour going in and 19 going back out, which would be about 38, I believe. Thank you. Yeah, in reference to the economic development director, we've had this conversation many years back, including when, you know, Karen Miller was on the board. She was always bringing that subject up and it's, you know, it's, it's back here on my radar right now. Um, well, it's, I it's, understand the circumstance in which yeah. Probably necessary at this time. Uh, there think, may, we all know there may come a time when. when well, I think that, and, and I'm not suggesting, change. I'm not suggesting that we've, uh, you know, uh, written in stone that this position is here forever. Um, it is like many things. It's it's difficult to measure. Um, you know, you can. <coughs> read her reports, she, she produces monthly reports, she talks about what she's done with, with businesses and, you know, have things happened because of her or that position? I don't know. Yeah. Have other things not happened? In other words, did she prevent something from happening that is to our benefit? If, you know, if something, uh, somebody's thinking about leaving and they don't, you know, that's, that's as good as getting somebody to stay. So it, it is difficult to, um, to measure that. I think it's reasonable to have conversations about it. I think for the next couple of years, while we've got Main Street in our radar, and pretty soon, you know, dealing with it day in and day out, I think we, we're going to need that assistance. 
Is there a percentage of her work then that would be allocated to the De uh, Main Street reconstruction? There is. So, I mean, why wouldn't it be directly reimbursable if she's actually working on um, working with businesses on, on trying to continue better well, the communication and all kinds of other things that would be going on? I'm just asking the question. Excuse me. Um, it's a reasonable question, Jane. Um, the, the work that RW is doing. Uh, they, they send us a bill for that, and then we get reimbursed f from the, the state. So my understanding is if we're paying her this money and then she's doing work for um, that would be attributable to Main Street, we could get reimbursed for that share. Okay, so if she, if she tracks her time. Yeah, they all do. That. Okay, I think... Uh, I, I had another question okay. um, that was related to what was presented last week. Uh, it was mentioned that the, um, there'd be a historic preservation study done of the neighborhood that's out beyond the roundabout uh, on the west end of the village, and I'm certainly supportive of that. I just wondered if we were soliciting more than one um, cost estimate for the work because I, I, um, I've done that kind of work in, in, in terms of soliciting grants myself in the past, my job, and I, would, I could certainly provide other uh, consultants' names so that you can get three approved equals. Yeah, can. well, I don't know yet if we're even doing it. That will be a decision that will have to be made tonight. Um, and then, uh, you know, we... We just had this type of work done. I know that uh, the same person who did the work that was done a year ago and, and this year for the village in the Edward Ferrari Utility District is the same person who we have reached out to to get prices, but no commitment has been made yet. Okay, thank you. Okay, I guess we can throw the ball in your hands now, Bill. Okay. Um, so the first item is to authorize the submittal of the Greeter Grant application. Um, Steve Lotzbeach talked about this when the planning budget was presented a week or so ago. I can't remember if it was last week or the week before. Um, and the Friends of the Waterbury Re Reservoir have kind of gotten their act together and they've decided that they want to uh, sponsor the Greeter program again. Uh, this is a, a pass-through grant. Uh, the state can't give a grant directly to an organization like the Friends of the Waterbury Reservoir. Um, the recommendation is to apply for the grant. Um, the grant, if awarded, I think, um, I think the Friends of the Waterbury Reservoir are asking for slightly more time for the greeter than they had last year, so I think they're asking for about 2,800. The budget right now includes a $2,500 uh, amount for that. I don't think we need to change the budget because this is completely a pass-through. Mm -hmm. Whatever the cost is, we'll be reimbursed for it. Um, so the only question is, is, is the select board willing to authorize me to sign the grant application and to submit it on behalf of the town. Board have any questions or comments? All right, if somebody wants to make a motion then to authorize Bill to uh, sign the greeter grant application to the state of Vermont and the Friends of the Waterbury Reservoir. I'll make a motion. A second. I'll second that. Uh, no further discussion. All those that, that approve, say aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, the next item is an amendment to the Janet Tech uh, janitorial contract. Um, Janet Tech is the company that we have contracted with to do the um, cleaning and housekeeping here at this building. 
They also uh, do work at the two fire stations. Um, they have been excellent to work with. Um, the, the gentleman that does the work here is very, very thorough and uh, very accommodating. Uh, he's in contact with Bill Woodruff quite often. If he finds uh, problems when he's here, he lets us know. Um, so I'm, I've been very happy with them. Um, the price that they're asking is to go up from $1,345 a month to $1,370 here at the office. Um, they clean uh, three times a week between the 1st of January and April 15th, and then um, from April 15th to December 31st, they go back to twice a week. Um, that's worked out quite well uh, this time of year. We want the extra time just to keep up with the floors. Yeah. Um, I think it's, it's, it's worth it. For the fire department, they're asking to go um, from 206 to 210 a month for um, the Main Street Fire Department fire station, and then for the center, from $108 to $110 a month. Um, the fire station down here gets once every other week, and the same up there, so twice a month, basically. So I would recommend that you authorize me to approve this contract. These are the prices that I've carried through in the budgets already, so uh, the board, however, needs to authorize it. What's the contract year on that bill? Is it calendar year? Yeah, January 1st to December 31st. <clears throat> Actually, it was, uh, it's effective January 1st, but uh, we signed the original contract on January 22nd, 2016, so we're just a little bit behind on this. She was on vacation and didn't get it to me until Tuesday last week. So. Okay, does somebody like to make a motion? Make a motion to uh, approve the uh, new amounts for the Janitec janitorial contract. I'll second, I'll second that. that. Uh, <clears throat> two seconds. Two seconds. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. That one's that one's not a tough one to swallow. Okay, time for the budgets, huh? Yeah. Um, it doesn't matter which one we do first. It's, probably because I told Carla to put the capital budgets on first. She did, and maybe that's what we should do. Um, there are a couple of extra copies around if anybody wants one. Um, so, is this the same that she sent out by email? Yeah. So I sent an email uh, late yesterday afternoon uh, for the capital budget, and then I sent an email on Saturday, late in the day Saturday, for the uh, operating budget. So let's look at the capital budgets first. Um, we've talked about this a little bit already, and um, as I said in the memo, uh, the proposal is uh, what I sent you the other day, does not require any borrowing. Um, we're talking about a pretty big paving project on Loomis Hill Road, about a half a million dollars, and then uh, two smaller jobs, one on uh, East Street and one on Jenny Davis Road. Uh, mill and overlay on East Street and an overlay on Jenny Davis Road. Um, so that's all class three roads. Uh, $570,000 for that. Um, the revenue into the paving fund is exactly the same as last year from the highway fund, $288,000. I'm budgeting for $82,000 uh, from the pilot program, which is no change from the actual received last year. Um, and uh, we have uh, $5,800, I mean, five, yeah. 
$58,000 of debt service to pay, and that's on the, uh, the loan that we took, the bond, 10-year bond for Perry Hill. Um, moving down to the infrastructure fund, again, um, I'm showing a state grant of 76.5 there. Uh, 24,000 of that grant would be for armoring the riverbank on uh, Little River. Um, we had hoped to do that project last year and didn't, but the grant is still in force. And then on Perry Hill, um, the uh, large culvert that's just uh, this side of Perry Lee Road uh, was overtopped in a flash flood storm a couple of years ago. Uh, we've been going back and forth with FEMA on that. I'm hopeful that we'll get it done. Uh, we think it's going to cost a little bit more than FEMA has uh, suggested, but we're also, if it does, we're working with them to try to get an increase in the grant. So right now, the $70,000 down below in, the, uh, in that 120 for culvert improvements, uh, that's FEMA's number, and the 52.5 would be the grant number if it's 70. If it goes up, we think it's closer to 80 or 82. Um, and uh, if it goes up that amount, uh, we'll hopefully get an additional grant, but even if we don't, uh, we'll, we'll do the project. Um, $155,000 transfer in the revenues from the highway fund, which is the same amount as last year. And then you can see um, sidewalk uh, repairs and replacement, $40,000. Uh, we'll definitely do the sidewalk on the other side of Butler Street. We may be able to do the sidewalk on the other side of Winooski Street. We're not positive there yet because we know Winooski Street is going to be used as a little bit of a detour. And uh, whether we can get in there and do that work or not is, is not certain at this time. Um, the culvert improvements, um, uh, that, uh, I'm sorry, bridge improvements, $138,600. That's the bridge on Guptill Road. We talked about that a couple weeks ago with Bill Woodruff when he was here. And then that $30,000 upgrade to structures, that's the Little River project that I talked about. And the uh, remaining $50,000 in that 120 are, are two relatively large culverts on Loomis Hill. We talked about those last week. Um, both of those budgets, if they were standalone budgets, um, the paving would end the year if this happens exactly as is on this page, almost $300,000 in the hole. The uh, Fund 71 would be about $187,000 in the hole. But if we move down into the uh, highway vehicle uh, uh, CIP, Again, the same transfer, and if you read my memo, I, I had hoped to increase the transfers from the operating fund into the CIPs in every instance, but I didn't. The only one that I put any additional money in was the uh, fire vehicle CIP. So all the highway CIPs have the same transfer as last year. Um, we took the... Uh, took ownership of the dump truck today, that $119,000. Uh, we typically don't buy things in advance, but that truck was ordered last year, and uh, uh, they weren't able to make it in time, and it didn't get delivered until today. And as I said, the fact that that truck didn't get uh, built in 2018 helped a little bit because we had the unanticipated expenditure of $152,000 for that sidewalk plow. Um, there's a pickup truck and then a, a tractor that we use in the rec and cemetery departments that comes out of the CIP as well. If all of that happens according to uh, this uh, spreadsheet, that fund will end with $25,678 as a balance. And then the fire vehicle CIP at the bottom of that page, uh, the transfer in is up 3% from last year, 166,690 as opposed to 161,635 uh, budgeted. And uh, 
And right now, in this CIP, there's, there's nothing uh, being purchased in the fire department. We'll come back to that in a, in a minute. And then on the last page, uh, Fund 74 and 75, Fund 74 is the fire station CIP. There's no balance in that fund right now, and there's no expenses. I, we pay the debt on the fire department, on the fire station bond, directly out of the fire budget, rather than do a, another bookkeeping transfer and a transfer. When I set this up, my hope was that we would transfer into this Fund 74 the amount of money that we need to pay the debt, plus a little bit more so that 10, 20 years down the road when we need to replace the roof or replace windows or fix doors or whatever, that we would have some money. Uh, right now, the last couple of years, we haven't been putting anything into this fund. And I feel disappointed about that, but we have a pretty big uh, tax increase to face right now as it is. So I haven't moved anything in here. I think the, the fund will stay there, and whether we can put some aside in there, you know, even if we put in five thousand dollars, you know, it would be it would be something that we could uh, have down the road. But right now, there's nothing going in here. And then in Fund 75, I'm sorry, go ahead, Chris. No, I'll just uh, before you were moved on to something else, I was just going to. But go ahead and finish up. Okay. So Fund 75, the Recreation CIP, the, there's two columns in here. Uh, the, the, the budget 2019 column, and then to the right of that, uh, it says without the grant. So on the revenue side, the first line item that shows up is that $50,000 VOREC grant that uh, you authorized being uh, applied for a couple of meetings ago. So that has been submitted. I'm not sure when we'll find out about that grant, but if we receive that grant and we put in $30,000 from the rec department in a transfer, um, we'll end up with revenues of a little more than $80,000. And then on the spending side, uh, the $27,000 in the recreation building would include uh, $15,000 worth of renovations in the bathhouse, uh, uh, new uh, unisex bathrooms, family bathrooms, um, and then uh, the building really should be re-roofed for $10,000, and then there was uh, one other $2,000. I can't remember what that was. Um, recreation. Oh, and then a, a sun shelter for the for the pool. And then the field improvements, $35,000 would um, put new lights in at the uh, softball field and at the tennis court, uh, improved signage, and then some uh, parking lot improvements here at Dark Row Field. Um, and then um, $3,500 for a uh, uh, lift, handicap lift for the pool and then um, some money for the, uh, the land out behind the armory to, um, to do some tree thinning in there and then cut some trails so we can use that, uh, that uh, facility that, that we have and then the $1,000 a year for the community gardens. So that column comes up to $76,500, and if we spend that and got the grant and did the transfer, we would end up with about $6,200 in that CIP at the end of the year. If we don't get the grant, um, the right-hand column, we would spend $15,000 to do the renovations in the bathhouse to the bathrooms. We would spend $17,000 to do the lights at the softball field. We would not do the tennis court lights. Um, the playground equipment there um, is, actually the playground equipment can be 5,000 in both those columns, so that's a, a mistake that I made. Um, that's, um, oh, I'm sorry, the 5,000 is right in that column. 
Um, most of that is for uh, some work on the play structure at Rusty Parker Park. The Rotary Club is raising most of the money for that. The town's uh, share would be labor and most of this money in here would just be paid back to the highway department to reimburse that department. So it's, it's an in-house transfer really. Um, so if we don't get the VOREC grant, there'd be $37,500 worth of uh, spending. That particular CIP would end up with $4,768 in the hole. Now, if you just come back to the, to the second column from the right, at the very bottom of the page, uh, this totals up all the revenue that are going into these funds, uh, into these CIP funds. So grant money transfers from uh, operating budgets and uh, the pilot money, that adds up to $941,690. All the expenditures in all of the funds add up to uh, $1.425 million. Um, that's $484,000 uh, less revenue than expenditure, but Coming into the year, we have $514,000 in all of these CIP funds. So we could do everything that I just described, and if it all worked out just as I described it, as it's described here on paper, these six CIP funds would end the year with $30,536. So we can do everything that I just talked about without borrowing if we wanted to. Now, I have another... Um, I did not email this, but I'm going to hand out another spreadsheet here. Um, actually, I'm going to hand out two more. and two at the bottom. There's a couple here if anybody wants them. So as we discussed um, last time with Gary Dillon, the fire chief, um, we're to the point that uh, this year or next and potentially the year after. So sometime between 2019 and 2021, there's two pump trucks that should be replaced according to the schedule. They're both 20 years old uh, next year, I think. So there was some talk about uh, should we buy one this year? Should we buy two this year? Should we buy none this year and buy two next year or one this year and one next? So if you look at the one that's um, that shows as number one at the bottom of the page. Uh, what I've done here is um, recommend, not recommended, but the option is borrow $500,000 this year. And if we borrowed $500,000 this year, I would put $300,000 of the loan proceeds into Fund 70. That's at the top of page one. And then would do the paving that I described, and instead of having a, um, a deficit of $300,000 at the end of the year, would have $345 in that paving CIP. I put the other $200,000 in the, in the Fund 71, which is the infrastructure CIP, and that would end with a positive balance of $12,914 as opposed to um, the negative 187086 that it had. And then in the fire CIP on 73, none of the loan proceeds would go into the fire budget, but we would buy one pumper for $475,000 
and would end the year with 10,368 in that CIP because the fire department CIP already will have enough money in it to buy the pumper after the transfer is made this year. Um, it'll have, you know, if we didn't, if we did what I described first it, and didn't buy anything in the fire department, it would end the year with $485,000. So we could spend $475,000 for the pumper, and that's an estimated net cost, about uh, $490,000 uh, minus the, the trade-in of one of the existing vehicles. And um, the trade, Gary said 15 to 20,000, this assumes 15,000. So that scenario would be if we, if we were to buy one fire truck this year, uh, we wouldn't have to borrow to buy the fire truck, but if we didn't borrow at all, then our um, the first scenario that I talked about, thirty thousand five hundred thirty-six dollars being in the bank, you know, for all six of those funds, uh, would be almost five hundred thousand dollars in the hole. So, with this um, scenario. If we borrowed $500,000, we would end with about um, $55,000 altogether in the, in the six CIPs. So we could borrow $445,000 if you wanted to and have about $500 in it, but um, I, I think if we were going to borrow, it wouldn't be sad to have $55,000 as seed money going forward because we'll certainly need it. Um, number two, the, say the spreadsheet that has number two handwritten in at the bottom, instead of borrowing um, $500,000, this one contemplates borrowing $890,000. And this would be what would be necessary if you wanted to buy two fire trucks in, in one year. Um, we put the same $300,000 into the paving CIP, and that would end with the $345. This is all on the first page. We put $190,000 into the uh, uh, infrastructure CIP, and that would end with $2,900 in it. Um, Fund 72 doesn't get touched, just like it did in the last example. And then we would put $400,000 in the fire CIP, and then we would spend uh, 458,775 twice, whatever that adds up to. I didn't add it together. Um, and then we would pay the debt uh, on the uh, tower truck and the rescue truck, and the fire CIP would end, it would be about $32,000 in the hole, but they don't have another truck to buy for a couple of years, and with transfers that we make on an annual basis of about 165000 you know, after one year more, it would be back in the, in the black. But if we did that, we would end, if everything worked out this way on your last page, you'd see that we'd end with about a little less than $3,000 in the bank. Um, you know, this, the discount, the discount on buying two trucks is about two and a half percent, um, and uh, you know it's it's two and a half percent on almost five hundred thousand dollars is some money, but it's it's a stretch. I mean, we'd have to 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 borrow um, eight hundred ninety thousand uh, dollars. I think would be a little difficult. And while you're mulling this over, I'm going to pass out one more thing to you, and then we can let me get through this, and then we can talk about it all together. Bill, can you remind us on those pump trucks? One is definitely in need of replacement. The second one, were they both basically at the same age? They were, they were both bought at the same time. Okay. Um, when we bought them, when we, when we bought them 20 years ago, there was a town fire department and a village fire department. So the town bought one, and the people who lived in the village 
bought their own and paid for part of the town one. So uh, now after the two departments have merged, we have, we've got one less truck than we had when we were two departments, which is a good thing. It's just that we've got these two that are um, the same age. And uh, you know the other option, and it's, it would take a while to get there, um, and if we waited, I think, five years, then we'd be, we'd be having two then, because we had one truck that was, uh, I think, five years uh, younger. But anyway, this, what I've just passed out here now is showing you what our debt is as of 2000, December 31st. So at the top of the page, this really goes back to 2016. So if you go, if you see where it says to others there, and you go to the right of that, where it says uh, percentage, and then there's 95.34%. Just drop down from that. You see where it says principal balance 12-31-2016? That's what we had outstanding on December 31st, 2016. So if you go down um, until there's a total, we, we had debt in 2016 of $5,928,400. If you go back up to the top of the page, the very top left of the page where it says 4.66%. Of that $5,928,000 that we owed in debt, $276,400 of it we had borrowed from ourselves. So that represented not quite 5% of the total. So our real debt at, at December 31st, 2016 was that next number, 5652 That's what we owed to the bond bank and to the uh, People's United Bank. So of our total money that we had borrowed, 95% of it was owed to others. Now if you stay in those same three columns and drop down to the bottom of the page, <coughs> well, go back up to the top. You see the ones that are in red, the Gibbs note and the storm drain note. Those have been paid off. Uh, the Gibbs note was paid off a couple of years ago. The storm drain note was paid off last year. So we didn't have to uh, include the storm drain note in this year's budget. But going down to the bottom of the page, you see there all the debt that we have outstanding now. And it's all in blue. It starts with the Perry Hill uh, paving bond at 400000 If you look at the top at 2016, it was 500000 So we paid $100,000 of that one off already. So right now, if you go down to the total of those blue numbers, it's $5.6 million. So we've, we've paid our debt down almost $300,000 from 2016. Um, uh, more than $300,000, $320,000, 600, $320,600. Um, and the percentage down to the bottom left page now, um, we have, of that $5.6 million that we owe, we owe ourselves 760000 of it. So 13.5% um, of our debt is owed to ourselves. So our real debt is $4.8 million that we owe to, to others, to the banks. And the difference between the 5.6 that we owed in 2016 to what we owe now to others is $804,500. So we've done a pretty decent job of paying down our debt. Um, and then uh, the bottom uh, over to the right, that's the schedule that we, that we have uh, that we have right now. And um, so in 2019, with the debt that we owe right now, our principal and interest payments would be $650,421. Everybody got that number? And then going across, um, if we don't incur any additional debt, Next year, our debt service will be $22,300 less. The year after that, it will be 17 less. The year after that, it will be $48,000 less. So um, in the, between now and 2026, if you sum those numbers up, 
Uh, we've got $4.522 million worth of uh, principal and interest to pay uh, in the next one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight years, including this year. Down at the very bottom, if um, one, two, three, four, five, uh, that is what would happen if we borrowed five hundred thousand dollars this year. So, where it says in small print there, annual. I just carried the 650,421 down from this year. That's what our debt service will be this year, principal and interest. If we borrow money this year, we won't have to make a payment on it until next year. So the 650,421 stays just as it is for this year. And then I just assumed uh, a $500,000 note at 4% simple interest. Uh, paid off in five years. So in the first year, we'd have $120,000 of new debt service. So it would be $748,095 next year as opposed to the $628,095 uh, in bold up above, a few lines above. And our change would, from this year to next, would increase our debt service uh, $97,624 because we've added one hundred and twenty dollars of new debt service, but we're losing $22,000 of old debt service, so it nets out to 97,674. And then going forward, we would have lower payments every year. So in that scenario, um, we would uh, have in the next, between 2019 and um, 2026, our debt service would be 5,082,000 or $560,000 more than it would be otherwise. So um, I think we have the capacity to borrow if we want to do that. Um, and I'm not recommending that right now. I think you know we can probably make it to 2020 and 2021 to buy the fire trucks if, if we want. And if you want to have one more year of shedding some more debt and just understanding that if we do everything on that first CIP budget that I gave you, that we'll have basically used all of our CIP reserves. Uh, you know, we put in um, 288, 388, uh, 3, 3, so that would be 430, um, 520, 6, So we're you know we're putting in about six hundred thousand dollars a year from the very operating funds. So um, I'll stop talking because I'm sure somebody has a question. Can you talk a little bit more about the delay on the trucks? I know Gary said there was like a 20 year, um, I don't know if it's a compliance thing or what are the, what are the potential costs or risks? Yeah, so, so the um, ISO um, rating on, on pump trucks is 20 years. Um, the ISO does a rating and your homeowner's insurance and property owner's insurance is somewhat tied to that. Every so often, and uh, Everett was uh, on the village trustees the last time that the ISO actually came here and, and did a uh, kind of a uh, fairly intensive survey. They look at your vehicles, they look at your manpower, they look at your water supply, uh, whether you have a hydrant system or not, and then they assign uh, a, a number to it. And I know in the village, uh, it's still the case, and I don't, I don't know the number. Uh, I think the rating system is something like one to nine. Uh, the village has the best rating that a volunteer fire department can get. Um, it has a good hydrant system. There's a hydrant just about every 500 feet in the village. Um, we have a good, uh, you know, over 50 uh, firefighters, and we have good, well-maintained equipment. Um, 
So the, the trucks will be 20 years old next year. So we're still within bounds until we get to the following year. And, you know, I don't think it's going to make any difference in the ISO rating. They're probably not going to come around to, to check. And if they did, and we said, yeah, we've replaced one this year, we're going to replace one next year, I, I don't think it will be a killing matter. But, um, and again, I'm not recommending not buying a truck this year. I'm, I'm saying that if we do, we have to borrow if we're going to do it uh, because we don't have enough money to do everything else that we've planned to do. If you want to cut the paving down and you know don't do as much paving and buy the fire truck, we wouldn't have to borrow. But if we want to do everything that is on these budget sheets and we want to buy a truck, I think we have to borrow. I mean, I personally feel like as soon as we buy another truck, we start that clock again. So we have to think about that too. And if we're not, I mean, I understand the savings of two and a half percent for two. And of course, I don't want to put anyone at, if, you, if, if, I, if I heard you saying that it was a, a risk to the firefighters to not upgrade the truck, that would be another thing, but I think we really do have to consider that we're, we are restarting that clock as right. soon as we buy one. And, and you know, Gary was pretty clear to us last week, and, and when I talked to him about uh, not n no truck this year, he said, "If you know that that's fine." And and I think the initial the initial, um, the initial um, I don't want to say offer, but suggestion by Gary was, you know, these are expensive things. Maybe you want to do one this year and one next year. Um, you're right. The clock will start running when we when we buy a new truck. Uh, if we're supposed to get 20 years out of it, next year will be 20 years. And I, I don't think it will be any um, issue if we bought one next year and one the year after. If we don't buy one this year, we still have the option to buy two next year if you know situations change. We can we can look at that. You know, there is the only risk, and I think it's minor because um, the Fed is increasing interest rates. So there's a little interest rate risk. The interest rates will probably be a little bit higher next year than they are this year. But if they keep raising the interest rates kind of on their schedule that they're, they're on, it's not going to be a material difference. It'll be a couple thousand dollars worth of a difference. It's not going to be ten or fifteen thousand dollars worth of a difference. Um, you know, as little as four years ago, in 2015, when we borrowed five hundred thousand dollars for Perry Hill, I felt that you know we should spread that cost out over over ten years. We borrowed it for one year, and then the next year we refunded the note and turned it into a 10-year bond. So the Perry Hill project really is going to be paid off over 11 years. We did the work in 15, we paid interest in 16, and, and just rolled the note forward and turned it into a bond, and then we had a 10-year amortization starting in 16 through 26. Um, I think now, uh, we could borrow $500,000 and pay it off in five years. Now, we could go to the bond bank and say, let's, let's you know, pay the $500,000 off in 20 years because it's, a, it's got a 20-year life, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, it costs a little bit more money in, in debt but you pay it off over the course of um, the whole life of the truck. And people that are here now that aren't here in 10 years won't be paying for it after they leave. And people who aren't here now and come in five years or 10 years or 15 years will pay their little bit. If we want to do that, we can, we can have that discussion a year from now. It's a little complicated. We can't, we're not in a position to have a bond vote on um, 
town meeting day right now because you need a certain amount of time for the warning, you need public hearings. So we can't have a bond vote. But if the board next year decided that, you know what, let's pay this off over 20 years, uh, they could take actions to refund the note, just like we did with the paving note, which was a five-year note when we first took it, and then we decided to refund it and turn it into a 10-year bond. So that, that's something, and of course, that would, it would cost more in the 20-year life of the loan, yeah. but it would, in terms of your annual debt service, it'd be a fraction of this. Are there rates, um, what are the, how do the rates compare for a bond? A bond? Well. Um, are they a little higher? Yeah, the, the longer that you go out, the, the higher your rate is gonna be. Just like if you go to the bank and get a 15 year mortgage or a 30 year mortgage, right. your rate for a 30 year mortgage will be a little higher. It's a melded rate though. Um, I was just looking at the, the rate that we got on the, uh, on the uh, paving bond and it's there right at the top. In 2015, the first, um, I think the first three tranches of the bonds that they sold carried interest rates of less than 2%. Um, by the end of, you know, so the, the, the first year was, I think, 1.1%, and the 10th the year was about 2.6%, and it, you know, it averages about, 2.2% uh, for the whole thing. Now those rates are gonna be higher. Um, we're probably talking about in the mid threes to low 4% rates now. One of the things that Gary had mentioned that I uh, stuck with me was trying to get some level of separation in the age of the equipment. Because uh, right now we're faced with two of them uh, reaching their end of use life at the same time, so it doubles our expense. If we were to look at doing one and then pushing the other one off either one or two years yeah. um, and, and spread that out, is that, how does that play in with your, your calculations here? Yeah, um, well, <clears throat> certainly I think that there's as I just explained to Mark, I don't think there's any danger of pushing the truck out. You know, if a year from now he comes in and says, you know, the truck really is in bad shape and we're going to have to pay $30,000 to keep it on the road, well, we'd probably make a decision to buy a new truck next year. Um, I didn't bring my box with me, Mark, my, uh, all my... Uh, CIP schedules in the other room. I can't remember if the third pumper is five years from now or if it's a full 10 years from now. I, 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 I want to. I'm trying to remember. I think Gary mentioned it. Might it might be 10, but I mean, I can run down and look. But. No, no, I just, I was wondering because uh, my inclination is that if we were to invest in it, I would, I would lean toward trying to separate out that, that age aspect of it. I kind of agree, and I think that we all, um, we have prioritized, we should continue to get as much paving done as we can and other infrastructure improvements, so I don't think I agree with, I, I think I prefer not to buy two, two at once. Yeah, I, you know, it would be nice to get that two and a half percent savings, but at it comes at other costs. And, right. uh, That's kind of what I meant. I wanted to show you what it would look like if you wanted to do that, but I, I don't think that's um, just causes too many other dominoes to fall. That's what I've been sitting here thinking, absorbing what everybody's been saying. And uh, I think our day of avoiding the unavoidables is about over. <clears throat> Because <clears throat> even if we kick the can on this fire truck for two years, five years, you know, I don't have the information in front of me, but just surmising what other um, possible paving projects that we're going to be faced with here in the next few years, if we either decide not to do anything after this year with paving or we decide to uh, try to address the other 
you know, reasonably bad roads, uh, Maple Street, Barnes Hill, uh, yeah, Blush Hill. Those two, Maple Street and Barnes Hill are clearly on. The and then Guptill Road's gonna be right behind that. So those are all big ticket items, and we don't have the, the ability to kick those. That's not including any bridges or sidewalks or anything else that we gotta deal with. So we don't have the ability at this point way I see it, to kick those projects down the road another five, ten years. It's just... So, um, I knew this day was going to come. I figured, you know, at some point we're going to have to buck up and deal with it. Um, you saw what Bill's proposing for a uh, tax increase. It... Uh, I know he's done the best he can. Uh, uh, he's done the best he has has been able to do with it. Um, I'd already speculated that we were going to see six to eight cents. Uh, he basically cut the uh, budget to the bone. I'm a little concerned about that. Um, he's cut it, cut it to the bone to get it six cents. Uh, I suspect by the end of the year, just in uh, dealing with this winter alone, the highway uh, budget's probably either going to come in at a deficit. Uh, I know there's concern about running out of sand already. Um, and the only option to where we can get our sand this winter, Bolton won't open up for us. Um, we're either going to have to get it out of Nadeau's because Minash sold out to Harris. Thought we didn't want to put sand on the roads. No, we don't. I'm happy with surviving, with, try to survive with what, I'm just saying there's the I, I know. potential I, I, here. And, and, no, <clears> disrespect, <throat> trust me. and no disrespect to any of the former highway foremen or the current one or the public works director, but if I could, uh, you know, if I had a dollar for every time that one of them told us that we were going to run out of sand, you know, I'd be able to go out to dinner at Mark's restaurant. Well, I drove by there the other day and I looked at the sand pile and it was probably the smallest it's been in some time and we're, we're still and, and two, two and a half we, months I'm out. I'm not saying we won't. Right, and I'm not saying either. But what I'm trying to get at is we can continue to try to avoid the obvious here and, and uh, it's we're not going to get away from it, no matter how hard we try. It's just... It's all coming to a head, uh, and it's not going to be pretty. Uh, so rather than, you know, it's my belief that, of course, we're going into the reconstruction uh, of Main Street. The you know, question I had for you real quick was, does this budget include that 2% of our, or whatever cost we have involved yeah, the, in this so as the well? Infra the infrastructure CIP for Main Street has $100,000 in it. Okay. And, uh, you know, the Main Street project is uh, about $21 million, and 2% of that is a little over 400000 It's a three-year project, and some of the costs are going to be borne by the EFUD for water and sewer. So. Um, the hundred thousand right now is my best estimate, um, and I, I, I don't think it will be an issue. I don't think it's going to end up being two hundred thousand. So, and you know, Chris, I I agree with what you're saying. Um, I'm not quite in agreement that the issues that you're describing or the things that we have to do down the road are undoable. I think we have uh, we have capacity. I think. Just this example that I've given you here right now, that we've, we basically have uh, $800,000 less in debt now than we had uh, three years ago, is a huge thing. Uh, we've been borrowing, but we're borrowing from ourselves. We're paying ourselves back into the tax stabilization fund, and then we're using the increase in the tax stabilization fund to, to offset uh, taxes. So. All of the things that you're saying are true. They're down the road. They're coming. We've got to face them. Uh, I, but I think that, you know, that that I've given an example here of five hundred thousand dollars worth of bar borrowing for the fire truck that we pay off in five years. And if we paid this off in twenty years, 
you know, it's it's very it, it's a very different metric. I can, I can I can almost get on board with that simply because the suggested life expectancy of these trucks are 20 years, so it's well not suggested. I I, 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 right, I would almost be more inclined to go go along with that as I as I would be to mortgage out a one of our sections of paved roads for 10, 15, 20 years. Um, the fact of the matter is if we decide to try to keep some kind of a reasonable schedule with the paving projects, just the few that I suggested, uh, we can mortgage them out, but they're, they're going to pile on top of each other and that's going to, you know, accumulate uh, a degree of, of tax increase. Yeah. Um, you know, borrowing from ourselves is great. Uh, it's still borrowing. We still have, we still owe that money. Uh, we just don't owe it to others, you know, uh, outside of the municipality. Well, you don't really owe the money. If you, if you well, felt that. Yeah, you could wipe the debt. You, well, yeah. And, you could. And if you, if you felt that, boy, you know, we really need to pave, you know, we got a million dollars worth of paving and, you know, we just can't afford to do it. You could go to the voters and say, write that off. I wouldn't recommend it. Yeah, that's a think, card I'm not willing to play right now. I don't think we need to do now. that. I don't think we're close to that at, right. this, at this stage of the game. Yeah. So I guess what I'm saying is, and, and we're supposed to be at the so-called peak of our economy. You know, the further we kick this down the road, there's a risk that the economy could go in another direction, which is going to make it even tougher for us to try to afford these things later on. So it's a hard choice here. And uh, Can you explain that a little bit? In other words, when the economy starts to drop, people tend to have more difficult time paying their own bills. So to go, with them, go to them later on when things become a little tougher financially and say, we need more money from you to do these paving projects, it's going to be a lot tougher to squeeze it out of them during a bad economy than it is I mean, we should have money pouring out our ears right now if the economy is as good as they suggest it is. Well, I, th I think we need to think back to what Bill said, which is, you know, there is a certain allotment of money being paid in the budget into these CIPs, right? So that's going to be a sort certain portion of what I think in our minds is we need to borrow. Um, it's of my opinion that maybe it's a good thing that two trucks are timing together to potentially get that discount and we need to consider trying to get any kind of there are going to be certain projects we, we discussed this before that the budget is so high that we really we're going to have to lend because it's going to all hit in one year right but if we can get the amortization schedule of these loans as close to the true life of whether it's a vehicle or a road it starts to make sense, especially at these rates that are are where we are currently, because I don't know what inflation estimate, inflation might be even flat right now, but even what Bill was saying, two percent right a four percent loan, and inflation's two percent. It's not. We're not. That I think is is the smarter, more fiscal thing to do is to not necessarily force ourselves into spending and starting the clock on a half a million dollar vehicle or a million dollars for two vehicles is to really look at and, and maybe press Gary a little bit more of like, what's, what's the true life expectancy that we can have with this truck? I understand the concern about the, the insurance rating, but if we can get another year or two, I've, I just quickly did the math, it's 23,500 per year, those trucks are gonna lose value every year. So I mean, that starts to add up really fast if we're gonna, if we're gonna accelerate the purchase, but if we can push those out, I understand that potentially in one year we're going to have to ask for multiple, multiple loans or bonds to to accommodate these large purchases. But we also have loans coming off. I think it makes more sense to make sure we don't force ourselves into a large purchase like that when we don't necessarily need to do it. Well, the other um, thing so you're going to be faced with is increased increased costs for those trucks the longer you kick them out. Increased well, cost plus the less you're going to get out of the trade-in, which isn't you know twenty thousand bucks for a trade-in. That's a joke. Right. But well, it's it's a joke, but it's reality. Oh no, I'm just I saying. Mean, but I mean, like two years from now, if it's fifteen, I mean, like the the farther you get out in the depreciation curve, the flatter it gets. So really, we're uh, we're basically saying the the vehicle worth is valueless already. Two years from now, it's going to be just as valueless. A loss of ten thousand dollars in value isn't 
you know, isn't comparable to a single truck or two trucks losing 25,000 a year each truck. So, I mean, you really have to think about that. And, and sure, I, I expect things to get more expensive over time, but we're also not asking the voters to potentially spend that money now or looking down the road. And I mean, there is grand list growth. There is CIP money every year going into these things. I think Bill said that next year, this just the CIP, if we don't do the truck this year, just with the CIP increase, we'll p potentially have enough money in that to buy the truck without borrowing. I understand that we'll run into the other vehicle, but. Right. What about so, highway trucks? So, that yeah, and there, there's, there's highway trucks. There's highway trucks as, as well. Um, you know, the, we've already, there was, this was the year that the tandem truck was supposed to go, and you know that straight up price for that is about two hundred thousand dollars. And you know I think we'll get a reasonable trade in. You know we'll get more than twenty thousand dollars for the existing truck. But we already, because the sidewalk plow last year, we agreed to kind of push that off for at least one more year. I mean, you know I. I I say this all the time, but I think that it's truer now than ever in that um, we, can, we can take time this coming year to look at the CIPs in detail. I mean, there's no other big planning projects going on. You know, the Main Street project is, is, is going to be here. It's going to take up some of my time. But Bill Woodruff and Alec are going to be doing most of that stuff. You know, if we want to look at, okay, let's look again at all this. I think your point about just giving up a year's worth of depreciation, even if it's just one year, that's, that's a lot. You know, that we, we plan to have those two trucks for, for 20 years, and they're only 19 years old now. So if we, if we bought a truck now, you're, you're, you're throwing away one year's worth of that depreciation. Um, I'm going to tell the board what I told you on the phone yesterday, Chris. And again, I, I understand your concerns, and I'm not trying to say that you know the glass is half full or the glass is half empty. But <clears throat> when I look at Waterbury's situation, I've been here for 31 years now in March. When I came here, the, the town and the village had fund balances that hovered between, you know, twenty-five thousand dollars deficit and fifty thousand dollars in the in the positive. So we, we were pretty close to to the zero fund balance mark. We didn't have any reserve funds. We didn't have a CIP. We didn't have a tax stabilization fund. We didn't have a cemetery fund. We didn't have a veterans monument fund. We didn't have any of those funds. We had a, a highway garage that you could see through, basically. Uh, we had two fire stations. One in Waterbury Center had been built privately by uh, the Waterbury Center Fire Department uh, under Sid Thurston's uh, work back in the, in the 60s. And the Village Fire Department, the Village Fire Station, was built probably in the 40s or early 50s. And the Village's department Everett probably remembers, but uh, you know there was a, a lot of heat that left that building, and uh, you know uh, it served the community well. Uh, we had the municipal office in the in the uh, Rusty Parker's building, and it was adequate. Um, and now, 30 years later, uh, we still have one of the lower municipal tax rates in Washington County. We have a, a, I call it still a new highway garage. It's 20 years old this year, but it's a much better facility than we had. We have this building. We have two fire stations that are, you know, six, seven, eight years old, something like that. So our infrastructure in terms of our buildings are way up above what they were. Uh, when you look out at the, what we have on the ground, um, you know, the village has got, uh, uh, an upgraded wastewater treatment plant that, you know, $7 million was just put into. We've got the roundabout. We're going to have Main Street. Um, and we have a couple million dollars in reserves in the bank. And 
in 30 years, this community has done a lot of good things to put itself in a much better financial position than it was in then. And we want to keep those reserves. We use the income from those reserves to help with the tax rate. Um, you know, when that $644,000 came from the school, there were people that wanted to, let's have no tax rate this year. Let's just use $644,000 and, and we won't have any taxes to pay this year. And fortunately, you know, the select board said, no, that's not a very good idea. And we've, we've grown that fund to almost a million dollars now. And we've given the voters about $300,000 in, in returns on that. So I know we have a lot of challenges going forward, and I know we have highways and bridges. I don't think our highways and bridges are any worse than anybody else's out there. I think we're, we have average highway and bridge infrastructure. I don't sense that when I drive in Waterbury that, that I'm driving on any worse roads than I drive in if I'm driving in Stowe or Montpelier or Essex. I'm not saying they all can't be better, but it's not like everybody else is up here and we're down in the pits. Mm -hmm. So I think we have capacity, and I think we've got challenges ahead, but I think we have the ability to meet those challenges. Uh, we've proven it, I think, over and over in this town that we'll, we'll meet the challenges. And does it require a little bit higher taxes? This year it does. but. We had the 45 cent tax rate for 2016, 17, and 18. And now it looks like it's gonna go up six cents unless you decide to cut certain things. There's been people talking about making, making cuts. Those can be done, but that's the only way I think right now you're gonna do it. So I agree with you, Chris. I just think that we have a lot more capacity than, than we think we do. And unfortunately, one of the challenges that we really face is that the, the community is getting more difficult for the average Joe to afford. Yeah, and, I'm just, I'm just, and, you know, just let me finish. Yeah. And, you know, the, the county treasurer called me back at the beginning of the month and said, $60,800 or whatever it is, that's your county tax. And she said, I can't believe it. She said, Waterbury's got the third highest grand list in Washington County now, only behind Montpelier and Barrytown. We have a bigger grand list than Berlin. We've got a bigger grand list than Barry City. And one of the reasons why we were able to keep our tax rate, one of the, you know, I think we're in the, you know, the lower third of the tax rates in Washington County. And one of the reasons we can is because I don't think we go hog wild with our spending, and we have a, a higher grand list. So you can have a lower tax rate and generate, you know, generate the money that you need. Whereas if you have a lower uh, grand list, to get the same amount of money, you have to have a higher tax rate. The downside of that is that young people find it harder to be able to move in here and buy a house because the property values are the third highest in Washington County. And, you know, that's a double-edged sword or two sides of a coin, a good side and a tough side. I mean, you've heard me say before, whether the appraisals are high or whether they're low, the tax rates fluctuate in the opposite direction to, to meet the needs of the debt. Uh, my problem is, and it has been quite a lot for some time, is, you know, I mean, moving forward, we're going to be... I think expected to ask to raise more money than we've been used to here in the last few years, especially, I mean, we've been fortunate the last three years, fortunate in other ways. We, you know, pilot program grew, we had some surpluses and things worked out in, in our benefit. But uh, I knew that would eventually come to an end. Um, you know, when people pull their wallet out, they're going to open it up and say, how much more capacity do I have here? And that's, for a lot of people, that's going to be an issue. Um, but, like I said a few minutes ago, we're trying to avoid the, un the unavoidables. <laughs> and, uh, uh, so either we take off a chunk of this now, and then probably for the next couple of years in front of us, or five years, however long it takes to 
get through these other big ticket items. You know, we just kicked a bridge down the road here for what, another seven years? That's two years of that's gone. So we'll be looking at that thing here pretty quick. The one right over here. You know, that's, that's just one of the things that's gonna be on our plate here. So I don't know, it's, uh, the sixth sense doesn't surprise me a bit. Uh, I've been trying to prepare myself for that. I think it's, in all truthfulness, I think it's low, considering what we're gonna be facing with the next few years. So we can either take a chunk out of that now and kick it down the road and face it again later, either next year or the year after that, or we can belly up to it and deal with it now. So I'm not sure what you're saying there. When you say we well, can take it, a chunk of it now, the, the operating budget. In other budget, words, you can we, kick some of it down the road. We haven't talked about the operating budget yet. And the operating budget is where the sixth sense is. What we do in the CIP this year is not going to affect the tax rate this year. We can, we can do everything that I laid out in that first CIP that we reviewed without borrowing. If we want to buy one or two fire trucks this year, we have to, we have to borrow, I think. Um, the operating budget is where the, where the transfers into the CIP come from. And that's, six, that's going to be six cents, regardless of whether we buy a fire truck or not, unless you take money out of the operating budgets. And as I said in my memo, memo I don't, if you want to take if you want to lower the tax rate in the operating budgets, it requires cutting services from what have been asked. Uh, the library is asking for an additional staff person. Um, you know, the highway asked for an additional staff person last year. But remember, of the six cents, three cents of the six cents is because we have a full year of the fire of, of the of the police contract. And we have a forty thousand dollar request from Wasi, yeah. so you know you, you can't say if you didn't have those. We have those. We made the decision a year ago to do the police. I think it's been an affordable way to get police coverage, and I, I think you know we all here want to go forward with that. The public knew a year ago that they were really saying yes to a three hundred and sixty thousand dollar police budget when they voted to give us what we had. So it's, it's, you know, it's three cents in terms of what we've lost in surpluses and additional staffing requests from the library and additional service requests in the recreation department and the like. Um, so just remember there's that little delineation there. So if we kick one fire truck down the road just for kicks and grins here. How does that impact our CIP as far as uh, truck replacements for the highway? I mean, are they gonna, is that gonna double up on us there when that? Well, so I, I, I just, guess what I I'm saying is either we, two trucks now we, or two trucks. If we, if we bought one truck this year, if we decide to buy a fire truck <laughs> this year, we're gonna have to borrow uh, because we, we just, we need to borrow. We don't have enough money in the reserve funds to pay for everything that we're gonna do. If we don't buy the truck this year, then next year, we'll put another $600,000 into the CIP. The CIP will, it's gonna be about $30,000 at the end of this year, so it'll have $600,000 in it next year. And then if we want to do paving and bridges and everything else, we'll have to borrow a year from them. I mean, I don't think there's a way that you can, that you can buy, put the fire truck into the equation anywhere without borrowing. Simple as that. Uh, to get back to Chris's question, though, it, it sounded like we're pushing off the uh, tandem replacement for this year anyway. Where does that stand in its lifespan? Is that something that can afford to go a couple more years before? It can afford to go one more year anyway, and maybe it can go longer than that. Um, you know. Uh, so potentially, if 
if you did uh, the fire engine this year, the, the tandem next year, and then the second engine the year after. Um, Just to the, get the separation. Well, it gets I that stagger that. in there yeah. and it, and it right. keeps uh, both of those entities from right. Uh, having to really deal with some maintenance yeah. issues. And it, it, would be, it would be nice if I could sit here and, and have a spreadsheet with everything on it right now. Unfortunately, I, you know, yeah. I've used up all the time that I had in the month just getting this stuff done. Yeah. And I think, you know, I tried to say about 10 minutes ago that looking at the future CIP, I think we can do that in the, in the coming year. We'll get through town meeting and then you know, we have a lot of time and we can run as many iterations as the board wants to see. Um, so I really, th I think the decision for right now, for this year is, are you gonna buy a fire truck this year or not? Uh, that, I think, is the decision. I don't think we can afford to buy two this year, especially that both of them are a year earlier than their, their life expectancy. So I think buying two and having to borrow eight or nine hundred thousand dollars would be tough. Yeah. Um, so it's either we live with the CIP budgets as we have, and we end the year with about thirty grand. Now every year for the past three or four, we've never spent as much in the CIP as we budget for. Um, you know, certain things happen this year. Our paving projects cost us less than we budgeted because we thought we were going to have to do, you know take out a lot of material on Whistle Mountain, we get up there and it turned out to be in a whole lot better shape and it was basically, we fixed the storm drains in the, in the sewer system and we overlaid it. So we saved a lot of money there. Um, most of the projects are, are in here and they're kind of um, uh, estimated at their higher levels and we tend to spend less. So we can, the likelihood is that we can do all the projects that's on that first sheet that I showed you, I would say it's a better than a 50-50 chance that we would end up with more than $30,000 in all of the CIPs put together at the end of the year because the projects probably won't cost quite as much as they show on paper. Mm -hmm. That's not a guarantee, but that's kind of what's happened over the course of time. I'll, I'll chime in again here on this. I think we also have to look at, Bill laid out pretty clearly that our debt, our principal and interest payments are going down every year. So we also have to think about that as, say we didn't buy the truck this year, and if we, I, I don't think a one year of separation on these trucks is, is, is gonna put us in that much better of a position down the road. I, I think we have to seriously consider if we can potentially get ourselves in a position to bond that out, and we can do a 10-year bond, or what's the longest bond we could potentially? So we could go to a 20-year bond, which if we did that next year, when would that first payment be due? If we, if we voted a bond next year and, and um, bought the truck next year, received the proceeds of the bond next year, the first payment would be due interest in April of 2021 and principal and interest in November of 2021. And we're saying that it, you think that the rates on that would be around 4%. And so let's just say a million dollars over 20 years, what is that really quickly, 50,000 a year? $50,000 a year in principal. Plus, and then, and then principal interest. and interest, right? And so. Four would be another 40,000. So $90,000 in, in the first year. Yep. I just think that's a much more fiscally responsible decision to look at doing that, to make sure that we're in a position to try to get a loan that represents cl as close to possible the lifespan of the vehicles. We always have the option of paying debt down faster. You don't. You don't, if so you, bonds you can't. You take a bond, you okay. typically don't. But we have other debt that's not bonded, and we potentially would still have other debt that's not bonded. Right. Um, I just think that, in my opinion, there's no reason to try to force ourselves into a half a million dollar spend on something that has life left to it. Um, we're being told that it has life left to it. And I think there are options to tackle the debts that are potentially in our future. And as is shown on this sheet, we're gonna be able to afford more debt and keeping a flat debt cost, right? So if in what, 2019, 
to 2023, there's $50,000 right there of additional debt service that we can afford without changing anything on the budget necessarily. So I, I just really think it's, it doesn't necessarily behoove us to spend that money if we don't, if the vehicle doesn't need it and we can get another year or two out of these vehicles. Yeah, and we're, we're paying ourselves a higher interest rate than we could get at the bank right now. And we, we decided to do that a few years ago because if you remember, you know, we, um, the, the fixed income markets back in the early 2010s were, were paltry in terms of a return that you could get. So whereas we used to buy uh, in our tax stabilization fund, we would buy, you know, 20-year uh, Verizon bonds or 20-year AT&T bonds or, you know, mobile oil bonds, what have you. And we would earn, you know, anywhere between four and a half and and seven and a half percent. Um, when those bonds matured, then we were faced with reinvesting those at two and a half, two percent. There were there were no bonds that were paying, you know, the rates that we had before. So we took that money and we put them into mutual funds that had high dividends. There were, you know. Um, uh, uh, income uh, mutual funds, income growth and income mutual funds. They had a dividend of three and a half, four percent. So we were kind of guaranteed that money, and that was a hedge against if they lost value. Uh, you had your interest in dividends that buoyed a little bit, and if they gained value, you know you'd have a four percent dividend and a five percent gain in price. So, so we did that, and. And we did that long enough that we kind of got upside down in terms of our policy. And the board made a decision a couple of times to say, well, we know the policy says, and I'm just picking numbers, that we're not supposed to have more than 60% in mutual funds, and we have 75%. We understand it. We're going to leave it there. But then in 2014, I think it was, when we did this paving, and then in, I guess it was 15, what I proposed was, well, if we borrow this money from ourselves, we take the cash out of this tax stabilization fund, and um, we'll pay ourselves back. Uh, I guess it wasn't for the, the paving was a real bond. What was the first one? It was the infrastructure CIP that we took in 2014. We took the cash out, and I said, if we pay ourselves 4%, that's almost what we used to get in the old days when we were buying corporate bonds. And because we owed it to ourselves, it was even safer than a corporate bond. It was our own money. So, you know, if we wanted to, we could, I could look at what we're paying the People's United Bank and we could pay ourselves back that same rate. We'd, we'd lose it on the other end because, you know, we wouldn't be getting as much in the tax stabilization fund, but anyway. Well, what I'm seeing here, and I'm coming from the perspective of having managed fleet and equipment uh, issues for a fairly good sized operation, and, and there's <coughs> always the issue when you get near the end of service life, you know, can you get another year out of it, or can you get another two years out of it? And invariably, something will bite you with that. Um, I think what you've proposed here gives us the ability to do um, the, the paving projects that we've talked about over the last couple of years, get those done, the culvert replacements and the like, without having to borrow, and we've got that in place. I think looking at the equipment issues, we really have three sizable purchases that we're looking at, and if we push it off this year, there's no guarantee that you only have to replace one of those items next year. Um, very reasonably, we could be looking at two or three of them all at one time. I think the separation that we were looking at, or at least I envisioned with the fire department, was the first engine replacement as year one and then the second one would actually be year three, and in the interim, we would be looking at the highway truck. Um, 
what that would do with respect to our need to borrow. Um, I don't know, and I, I you you haven't been asked to look at that, but the uh, first and second proposals you have here of the two of those. Um, I would lean in favor of that first one, which gets us the one engine with the borrowing. Uh, going back to Mark's um, bonding piece, if we find year two, year three, that it's appropriate to bond for equipment and extend that out, that still keeps us um, current funding for the highway projects and the bonding piece on equipment that has a lifespan that's more reasonable to, to be bonded for. Well, it's more realistic, you know, to, to be able to, I, I, more realistic to bond for a piece of equipment for 20 years than it is for paid growth. Paid growth, yeah. You know, I truly tend to agree with yeah, I, I wouldn't, what I wouldn't, he's I wouldn't, talking about. I wouldn't bond for paving for more than 10 years, like we did on, on Perry Hill. Yeah. I don't think you can <clears throat> do that for 20. Um, and as I said, this year, we have to borrow just because of the time. We don't have the opportunity unless we have a special town meeting, and I don't think that's worthwhile. We don't have the opportunity to bond this year, but we could always refund the note a year from now and turn it into a bond um, if we wanted to, you know. Let me ask you this. Would it, ultimately, would you want to, is your suggestion to bond for both fire trucks or just one? Ultimately, you know, one, even after the second one's purchased, would you I guess we take a look at that? In other words, could we borrow for this one, see how next year goes? If it goes fine, we don't need to bond for the fire truck. The third year, the purchase of the second fire, the second fire truck on the third year, at that point, we say, well, we should would bond. still owe three hundred thousand dollars on should, this one. Yeah, right. But and could we could, bond could, for both of them yes. at that point? Yes. That might be the better. That doesn't route seem like a bad way to go. That seems okay. Marcus. Then, then you wouldn't be bonding for quite as much money. Yeah, yeah I mean, basically, it's the, yeah, and I, I hear you. I understand that as these get to the end of the life, you, there's some risk there. Um, on the equipment, I guess I go back to Gary and, and Bill's note that we do take quite good care of our vehicles. Um, so, I mean, basically, my whole argument is, is mostly the depreciation that we're, that we're initially started. Um, but I agree, I, I think that's, a, that's an interesting idea, and I think that's definitely an option to loan and then potentially future bond to, to spread that amortization out. Um, but again, I go back to if we, if we don't need to spend it this year, I personally don't think we should, and we should maybe take Bill's suggestion of taking the time next year to look at all of these different things and how we could structure our debt without feeling as much pressure and timing for this year's tax rate, knowing that we're already potentially looking at the, the increase of six cents to, to wait and let Bill take 2019 to to really try to figure out our options and present it and save a little bit on depreciation. I guess I'd be curious to know what possible increase in the fire trucks, you know, waiting one year, two years, three years. Uh, yeah. You know, um, the difference. In. I think they said it's running about 3% right now. And what's grand list expected to go up yearly? Well, I've I factored in a half a percent this year because we got I, I factored in six tenths of a percent this year because that's what we got last year. Uh, let me just go look at one thing quickly. You can keep talking if you want. I think that's my sticking point here is that you know obviously I've I've never bought a fire truck in my life, but um, I tend to use lots of tools that are very specific to my trade, and I don't buy a new one just because it's new and shiny and I, and I like to use them until they're completely useless um, and then I buy a new one. Um, I, I like to get that last mile out of, out of everything um, and sometimes it does bite me but I'm you know I'm talking about $500 holes not half a million dollar tools. So that's 
So then the other thing is, is it, is it really <clears throat> foolish to um, not buy two at once and save? I guess it's not really that much of a save. It's $20,000 a year. He said about 2.5%, so 3%. So you could make the argument that you don't buy one this year. You buy two next year. You get your 3% savings, which offsets the potential increase in one of the trucks if you were to delay it a year. Right. And then look at doing that through a bond, which would spread out your debt service payment over the 20 years, which that payment wouldn't be due until the following year. It just spreads things out to help absorb these other yeah. potential costs. I guess we could kick that can down the road till next year. And as you said, which I think was a good point um, that Bill made, of have some time to prepare looking at the CIP before uh, January or as January approaches. Well, just look at it as two fire trucks on a bond. I think he, he was saying it would be around 50000 plus the interest on that payment. So let's say it's, let's say that comes out to a payment of, let's go $70,000 a year. We're talking about spending 475000 in one year, where if it sat in a note, that yearly payment would be significantly cheaper which I know that we would have every year following that, but we're always making a, we should always be making payment into these CIPs, so, and, and we do have debt coming off, so I, I think that is the, the way to absorb some of these large things, because we know we also potentially might need to borrow, and we'll probably need to borrow for some of these larger paving projects, but again, trying to get that amortization schedule out there at a lower rate, I, I don't think, and then absorbing whatever we can absorb through the CIP is, is the potentially safer move. Your batteries just not in. I don't know. It goes in and out. It's not red. Well, what sticks in my craw about this whole municipal government thing is that you're always on the hook for debt. I mean, in our personal lives, I mean, I've got equipment that's... <laughs> 20 plus years old and is still running strong and I've owned it for a long time and you know I, I'm too used to being able to wipe the slate clean and, and in this case there's no you don't have the capacity to do that well I think we would except you have those two large projects the the fire station and the municipal complex I mean the other yeah. loan balances I you know I think if you look down up and down and the understanding of and I, I, I think it's to your point, Chris, is that we have, and also to everyone else's point of trying to get these, these fire trucks off, maybe potentially overlapping, is that you know, we, we have a certain amount per year that we're going to say goes towards X, Y, Z, but if you have a large expense, you have to consider the borrowing just to spread it out. So I think that's exactly what we're running into, but I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. It's to be expected that you take these notes to help spread out those payments over multiple years, but it's not to say that we can't necessarily afford that debt. It's just literally how you, you, you need it, just like everyone else. If you need a new, new piece of equipment for your, your business, you might not be able to afford it in year one, but you know you're gonna be able to use that for 10, 15 years, and you might have to pay over five years to own it. So, I mean, I think that's basically the same thing. Well, it's the unfortunate part that the life expectancy of these trucks are so limited. I mean, uh, but by the time you get it paid off, you're right back in the same ballpark again. You got to go through the, you know, another purchase, and you never get out from under it. You know what I mean? But to your point, I understand. Luckily, we know there's income coming. <laughs> yeah, I, under, I understand what you're what you're uh, driving at here. Can we lease a fire truck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can, but that it's it's not worth doing. No, uh, the the lease payment it was is, mostly joking. Yeah. <clears throat> so what'd you get, Bill? So I just went to look, at, you know, the increase on the fire truck would be probably somewhere between seventeen to twenty thousand dollars a year in terms of, you know, inflation. Mm -hmm. So well we're buying it when you're out we decided we're doing it all. So if we bond if we bond next year <laughs> if we bond next year for two trucks as Mark Fryer's saying it doesn't impact our ability to buy the tandem, a new tandem, right? 
What's the tandem cost again? Remind me, approximately in this year's cost? Probably, probably with the trade in 160. Which we probably would have in CIP if we if we hold off and if we decide to bond out for the the fire trucks. There's a potential yeah, I mean, that we can absorb 160 in a CIP. Right. The um, you know the reality is we've got these six CIP funds, and Rebecca Ellis. When she was elected, we had one CIP that had everything in it. And she wanted to break it into six because she said, well, you know, we don't want to get in a position where we're spending money to buy something that we really don't have. But the way we, we have six CIP funds, and what am I telling you? In the aggregate, we, we have $514,000. In, in there right now, and at the end of the year, we'll have in the aggregate $30,000 in there. We, we use it as one CIP because it's hard to wrap your head around the fact that, well, we're sitting on $300,000, but let's go out and borrow $250,000 because that particular fund is underwater. You know, um, we don't have to borrow, and, and we typically don't borrow unless we have to. Um, I think that that's a matter of philosophy. Um, I'm more inclined to, to say we should borrow for things that have a 20-year life just because why do we want to pay for it in five years when we're going to use it in 20 years? And the people who are here now are buying the whole thing, and the people who are here 10 years from now aren't paying anything for it. And I think because the municipality is going to be here forever, that cycle is always going to be there, and you, you end up always paying for what you're using. And I don't really think that you're mortgaging your grandkids down the road by borrowing, because the, the town's always going to, it's not like, you know, after 40 years, you pay off your mortgage and you don't have any more bills. I mean, it's always going to be there, so. I mean, if we're going to have that truck for 20 years, like, like you said, I mean, I'd, like a lot of things in life, I'd, I'd like to know what my monthly bills are. Right. You know, if we can make it one. <laughs> but anyway, so um, it's a lot of philosophical discussions, but we're still coming back to you got to decide we are do. we buying a fire truck this year or not? Well, then, and again, that goes back to exactly that point. Maybe we're in a good position that they both need to be replaced at the same time. We get that 2.5% savings and we can spread it out over 20 years and it matches the expectancy of those trucks. And we got a little discount on buying two of them at the same time. Might not be the worst thing in the world as long next as... Year. Yeah, next year with a, with a bond. It seems by bonding and spreading out the payments too, um, it allows you to do other things, which are... that's. As you were explaining, you might need to borrow money for paving for these bigger projects. So that's not a bad thing either. So it sounds like right now, then, the uh, proposal is to uh, postpone the fire truck purchases till next year. And, and what's the situation the, with the tandem? Include the tandem in, this in year. that as well. Do the tandem this year? Is that a, I can't remember the details of the tandem. Can that go another year? Yeah, it's not in, the, no. the tandem this year is not in any of the scenarios. Um, so if, we bought the tan, if we don't buy the fire truck and we buy the tandem, we'll have to borrow $200,000 this year. Right? Okay, so, so we could put them all I, off. I would wait. I think it's the fire truck or nothing, uh, except what's on the list for this year. And as I said, you know, unfortunately, just haven't had the opportunity, but I can lay a lot of things out between now and next town, a year from now, and there's a, you know, there's as many different scenarios. I mean, the computer does things awfully fast. I can give you like <laughs> 50 choices if you want. So I, I'm, uh, I'm on the, the losing end of this. Uh, I would be in favor of replacing one of the fire engines this year and looking down the road to bundle that in with a with a bond, but. Uh, my senses, the rest of my cohorts here, are looking to wait for next year. And that makes sense from the perspective that we could put together a bond agenda item for those and, and do it. And there wouldn't be the time crunch that we, 
that we face right now. What did you estimate that payment would be? But if it was just a million dollars for two trucks over 20 years at well, today's rates, a million, a million divided by 20 years would be 50,000, right? Yep. And four percent on a million would be 40,000. So ninety thousand dollars in the first year for principal and interest, and then, and then the next year it would be uh, nine hundred and fifty thousand times four percent. So you know thirty thirty six thirty seven thousand something like that. So you you drop to eighty seven thousand or eighty six thousand the next year. So I mean, those year, are doable numbers. Year one would be like one hundred and forty thousand. Is no. No, I thought it was fifty thousand plus ninety. Yeah. Okay. No, it would be fifty thousand plus forty. Oh, okay, so ninety, 90 thousand in, in a in the single year would be the highest potential for a million dollars. If right. I'm doing my math in my head, a million divided by twenty is fifty thousand, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. And four percent times. A million would be forty thousand. So ninety. So ninety okay. thousand in the first year, which is, which that first year would be, twenty twenty one. Right. Right. Okay. I guess we've reached the consensus. And I'm not necessarily not on your side. It's <laughs> just. No. It's, it's just. Uh, uh, I'd rather you know. I'd rather deal with the debt and get it over with, but in this case, there's no getting over it. It's When it's done, you're right back into doing it again. So if someone, if, if you've kind of come to consensus, if someone would prove for the capital improvement budgets what I have marked as number one here? Uh, no, number one is Not the one number that, one, the one that had no marking, sorry, I'm sorry. The one that I sent out on Saturday. Or Sunday. This one. So how do you want to label that one? So just say uh, you approve uh, approve spending nine hundred and forty one thousand. No, that's revenues. Uh, one point four two five nine eight zero million. One million four hundred twenty five thousand nine hundred eighty thousand dollars worth of capital improvement spending. You want to make that motion? I make a motion. Nope. Make a motion that we approve spending one million four hundred and twenty-five thousand nine hundred and eighty dollars in combined capital improvement spending. Is there a second? I'll second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye, please. Aye. 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 Opposed. Okay, thank you. All right, um, on Saturday I also sent you out this sheet. Um, I'd like to talk about this first before we go into the operating budget because it, the operating budget <coughs> assumes $48,165 transfer from the CI from the tax stabilization to the operating fund. And um, in order to do that, it will take two things. One, for the select board to say, yes, that's what we'd like to have happen. And then number two, uh, I think we should, ha if we're gonna do this, it's kind of a, well, it is a, a change from the formularic formula that the uh, town meeting adopted back in the, was it the early 90s that we found that the other day? Yeah. So um, right now it talks about, you know, if you know, sell, the formula that we've used in the past few years is, you know, if it, the fund has to earn, the first 3% stays with the fund, the next 5% gets transferred, and then above that you split it. Um, what I'm proposing now is that we just go to the voters and ask them if they would authorize uh, withdrawing 5% of the year-end value of the fund every year until they decide to change that. And I, I um, put together 
uh, six kind of pro forma what happens if scenarios and in every one of them um, well not the on the first on the front page if you look at the bottom left it will say 5.9 percent so that that uh, the next from 2018 through 2038 there's a, a volatile stock market there, ups and downs, minus 10% in the first year, 17% increase in the 2030. Over the course of uh, the, ta the time, it's a 5.9% 5 5 return. And if we took out 5% every year at the end of the year, um, we'd still have $994,000 in the fund, and we would have transferred out 900,000 over that period of time. The two to the right of that are, you know, kind of doomsday scenarios um, that you that the stock market went down 5% every year between 2019 and 2038. Um, the middle one, which would show what would have to happen right now, is that we would take out the 5% in. Um, 2019, 2020, and 35,400 in 2021, and then we wouldn't be able to take anything out again because we've got a policy that says if the value of the fund goes below the 644 that it started, you can't take anything out. <coughs> the one to the right of that shows if we suspended that rule and still took out 5 per, I mean 5% a year, even though the market went down 5% a year, we could still get to 2038, still have taken $388,000 out and still have $117,000 as a balance. So those two are just to show what would happen in a really bad case. Uh, and then on the back side, I've got three different returns, all kind of uh, volatile ups and downs. The first one on the left has three pretty significant down years in a row, 10% down in 19, 13% down in 20, 12% down in 21. If we still took out 5% a year in that scenario, we'd get to 2038, have taken $701,000 out in transfers and still have $797,000 in the bank. And then the, uh, you go to the middle one, that's 6.5%. Which I think anybody would take that in a heartbeat, uh, and then the one further to the right is kind of pie in the sky. If it was a seven and a quarter percent return, in the old days when I first started here, you know, it was not unusual for financial advisors to tell you you should plan on eight percent return. Uh, we're not in that, you know, average. Uh, we haven't had that average for a, a while yet, and it's probably not a good idea. So anyway, I, I looked at this. I tried to look at it in a lot of different ways. The, the purpose of moving to this, taking 5% out at the end of every calendar year, regardless of performance, is to move away from the formula, which some years wouldn't allow you to take anything out, and the next year would allow you to take $55,000 out, mm -hmm. and you just have a volatile swing in your revenues, and this way it stabilizes it. So you, you're going to miss a few really big years, and I think the highest year we ever took out was about $67,000 one year. And then there's been probably six or seven years since we opened the fund where we didn't take anything out, uh, 2000. Um, 9, 10, and 11 being the most recent ones of ours. So I think this just puts us in a position to have a, a stable um, uh, transfer, and we call it the Tax Stabilization Fund, and it's kind of hard to call it stabilization when one year it's zero, and the next year it's 55, and the next year it's 20. <laughs> so I think this is better. Tax um, volatile fund. Yeah. <laughs> So, so if you think you this is a good idea, I would ask you to yeah. make a motion to allow me to include the $48,165 in the budget, and then when we sign the warning, it will have an article on there to ask the voters to approve this formula. 
I'll make a motion to approve the transfer of $48,167. Five. I know it says seven on that, but <laughs> in, the, in the budget it's one sixty-five. dollars so. dollars From the tax stabilization fund. Tax stabilization fund. Is there a second? I'll second that. Further discussion on this? We're not necessarily voting on that maneuver in the future. We're just stating what we're going to. So we can discuss this at a later date. I guess we always could, but. Right. It's going to go in front of the voters, what he's saying. I understand that, but the, the idea of it changing to 5% every year, are we voting on that or just the amount? Well, the motion is just the amount. The, the, right. the motion didn't include the over 20. Right. So the, the, the um, motion that I suggest that we put to the voters, you have it just so I can read it. Um, <coughs> to see if the voters will authorize the town treasurer in 2019 and in, each, and in each succeeding year to transfer from the tax stabilization fund to the general fund up to 5%. So it's up to. So the select board could recommend less if they wanted to. And then um, at the end, it says uh, this authorization shall remain in force until changed by the voters keeping the restriction in place that transfers should not be made if the fund drops below 644000 Yeah, and I think that's, that, that's going to be my one comment is maybe there needs to be a ceiling, but if it's 5% or less, if you do have a really good year, it makes sense to not necessarily take it because you have the opposite yeah. thing. If you can get the joys of compounding and keeping that right. money in there, right. don't so force it, yourself to it, use it. It says 5% or less. Yeah, yeah, okay. I just, okay, thanks. In that way... If the select board says, man, exactly that, we can live with only a $45,000 transfer and we could transfer 65, let's leave the 20 in there, you know, you, you'd have that option the way that's written. Just secures you to be able to afford to take that 45 in, <laughs> in, in down years. Well, you would be taking 5% if, if, if 45 was there, but I just wanted to make sure that if you didn't have a, if, if for some reason the fund, doubled one year, I think it would make sense for the board to really consider not necessarily taking right. the full pull. And, and that's why I said yeah, yeah. the 5% yeah. or less. Sure. I, that that's where I, I, I hadn't the seen the or board. less. Yeah. Okay. okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All those that are in favor? Say aye. 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 Okay. Um, so we've, we're down to the review of the general operating budgets. Um, <clears throat> we have reviewed almost all of these budgets in the past. We reviewed the fire budget already. Uh, we reviewed the planning budget. We reviewed the recreation budgets. <coughs> Excuse me. And we reviewed the, um, the uh, library budget. The only budget really that we hadn't reviewed is the general government budget, which is on the first two pages. The, the revenues are here on the first page, and then the general government budget is on the, on the second page. Um, I've made a few minor changes from what we reviewed last week. Uh, I put it in the memo. Any expenses that, we, that have come in that had to be posted back to 2018 have been done. I did lower the transfer that I had in the fire department budget. I think I had it up at like 169,000 last week. And this week I cut it back to 166. It's 3% increase over last year as opposed to 5% that I was looking at last week. Um, and I did that just as a means to try to, you know, get the tax rate down a little bit. As I said earlier tonight, I uh, would have hoped to put more into the CIPs. Last year we did put more into the CIPs, significantly more. Uh, I don't think we have that luxury this year. Um, on the revenues, so if we look at the first page, um, <coughs> I, I bumped the pilot up by $4,000, um, and I left the increase 
all here in the general fund, and uh, I carried eighty-two thousand dollars in the in the highway uh, paving CIP that we already talked about. Um, the the pilot payment has typically gone up incrementally every year, so I don't think it's a huge roll of the dice, and it's four thousand dollars. The pilot payment has never gone down. I'm not saying never can happen, but it never has. Um, the village administrative service fee is $2,000 less than it was last year. Um, it's probably higher than it should be, but I convinced the EFUD commissioners that leave it there for this year, and then we can talk about it going forward. Um, we don't have to get into the details of that. Everything else is pretty much uh, as it was last year. Um, I did bump the town clerk's fees down a little bit from what was budgeted. It is up a little bit from what we took in. It's up about $3,000 from what we took in. Went back and looked at the average, and the average was about fifty-eight or 59000 so I thought we could live with sixty. dollars um, Knowingly, repeating myself from last week, the revenues for the uh, recreation programs and the like are all soft numbers, uh, but if we don't get those revenues, the expense numbers will be similarly down. So it's just uh, you know kind of the best educated guess that we can have. On the expense side, uh, the first line in the general operating budget is the regular pay line. Um, that's up uh, about 3%, um, you know, increases for, for staff somewhere, you know, I would hope when we get to April, 2, 2.5% two potentially. Um, the reason why that's a little higher is because the pay that, um, what we pay Bob Fire is in that first line. It's in the regular pay line. Uh, She's expecting to, to work a few more hours. Uh, in 2018, she's tried to average about 20 hours. In 2019, once we get to the April to November time frame, which is when the construction will be happening on Main Street, she's expecting probably to go to 25 hours there. But that's all reimbursable by the state. So there's income on the first page. $65,000 of income under the uh, transportation liaison line. And um, I budgeted 65 this year. We budgeted 49 last year. We received 42. And again, because we received 42, she actually, she didn't work as much on that. You know, so the reimbursement goes hand in hand with the hours worked is what I'm trying to say. Um, the Historical Society is down about $6,000. They had a grant from <coughs> Karen Steele to pay for an archivist. That money will run out sometime in 2019, and it's not likely that they will keep that position. It's a municipal position. We had to put that person on the town payroll just because workers' comp and FICA and all the rest of it, the Historical Society does reimburse us. So again, that's, um, it's an in and out. Uh, it's no expense to the town. Uh, the Municipal Building Operating Fund, right in the middle of the page there under the general government, is down uh, $22,695. Uh, that's a payment that we simply make to the Municipal Building Operating Fund. We talked about that last week. Um, the time that the Public Works Department is spending here is lowering, and last year's budget and this year's budget had the one-time expense of the generator, which is, you know, $80,000-ish, and that won't be happening again. So um, <coughs> that, that's... Well, Bill, why would I think that uh, we were going to close that, that uh, line item out? Was that, uh, well, wasn't there a surplus in the municipal building operating fund that paid for the generator? And I thought we were going to, like, drain that and delete that. 
Well, we, we had two funds. We had the building fund, and then we had the municipal building operating fund. Okay. We had a surplus in the building fund, and we dumped that money into the, I mean, we, we took the surplus in the building fund and dumped it into the municipal operating fund. Okay. And so we got uh, some extra revenue in there last year. The building fund is closed, it's gone. The municipal operating fund is still there. And, and I just have that fund because it's easier to apportion the costs between the library and the, and the town that way. Um, the library's uh, payment into the municipal building operating fund is down by the same percentage. So, and going forward, I think that line is probably not going to go higher than the 45 that I'm budgeting. It may actually go down a little bit. I, I think we're kind of still on the downslope, and then after this year, we'll probably level off going forward. Um, so we had a big savings there, um, but if you go down a few lines to the commercial audit, which is in purple font, if your font is big enough to see it, um, 30,205 is being carried in the 2019 budget, which is $20,205 higher than last year's budget. Um, when we, well, you didn't look at it. When I looked at this a couple weeks ago, I had $22,000 there. The reason it's 3205 is because we haven't finished paying for the 2017 audit yet, and the auditor told me he wanted me to post it in 2000. Uh, 19. So, if we had paid it and posted it to 2018, that 13,796 would be $22,000, and the 30,205 would be $22,000, and it would wash. So it doesn't really matter, but it's still higher than we uh, were a year ago. Uh, we budgeted $10,000 a year ago, and, and we were blown out of the water by the prices that we got. Um, contracted services and public safety, uh, 365, 100, that's $180,100 more than we budgeted last year, and that's for the full year's worth of the police contract. Um, and um, I think that's a, it's a bargain for us. I think we're getting good service, um, but we're paying the full boat this year. So that's that. Um, fire department, we've already talked about. Uh, let's see. Um, oh, yeah, health and social services, no big deal there. Pool programs. You can ask questions about any of these, but I'm just hitting the budgets that we haven't talked about before. So if you turn over a couple pages and get the special articles, um, because we've talked about the recreation budgets and the planning budget. Uh, I'll come back to the planning budget in a second. So the special articles, um, we're, we're proposing, a, we've, we have requests for $95,868 worth of special articles in 2019. That's $1,268 higher than it was last year. And <clears throat> what's happened is the budget amendment that we made from the floor last year, we added 37,500 to the special articles for the 51 South Main Street parking lot. We didn't actually pay the village. We didn't buy that parking lot. So we budgeted for the expense. We knew in the summer when we set the tax rate that we weren't going to be doing that. So we didn't raise that $37,500. <coughs> But this year, um, the ambulance is requesting uh, their first time ever a request for a, a payment from the municipality, and it's $39,770. When we talked to those folks a couple months ago, the select board supported the um, inclusion of it, but indicated and made a motion to the effect that we would put that on the warning so that the voters would clearly understand it and have a chance to vote on it. So once we, once the select board approves the budget going forward, I will actually pull out all these special articles so the budget will, will go down by about $100,000 because 
the budget won't include the articles until they're approved. Um, but I want to show uh, the budget and the tax rate implications, assuming they all pass. So they're all in here. Um, the last thing on the planning department budget, um, when I was out of the room last week, you listened to uh, Steve talk about the, uh, the historic survey for the Ferrar edition. Um, it's in the professional services line, $14,100. Uh, I think somewhere between eleven and 12000 of that fourteen one is for that historical survey. Um, so if you want to do that, you got to keep the 14-1 there. The other $2,000 or so is to pay for um, the uh, uh, people, the person who takes the minutes for the planning department. So that's got to stay. And um, that's really it. Um, what I remembered last night was that we had talked a couple weeks ago about having a little bit of money, a couple $3,000 in place in case the opportunity arose to spend it on that, looking at the whole Airbnb thing, remember mm -hmm. that? I, I did not put that in the budget. Um, if you want that in the budget, I think it might be helpful to have that money. I'd add $3,000 to the planning budget. Um, and the historic district surveys. To me, that's the only kind of discretionary line in, in the budget, unless you want to do things like cut the appropriation to the library or, you know, peel back um, significantly in the highway spending or in the, um, you know, cutting services from what we have now. So I'll stop talking and let you ask a few questions. We're getting near the end, I know, so. So with what you got here, the tax rate <laughs> proposed is? Yeah, so if you turn back to the front page, I should have finished, I should have finished this. If you turn back to the front page, um, up in the top right where there's just those, um, three or four lines there with nothing underneath it in the columns. Um, the, the number right to the right of where it says percent change, $7,462,230. That was the 2018 grand list number. The number to the right of that, $7,507,000, is a six-tenths of 1% increase on the grand list. Below the 2018 grand list number is a number that's in purple font, 3,386,780. That's the taxes that we raised in 2018. If you divide those taxes by the $7.4 million grand list, you see right below that, 0.45385, whatever. Um, that was the tax rate required last summer, 45 point almost four cents, we rounded down to 45 cents. Over to the right, um, under the $7.5 million grand list, you see 3865380 That is the taxes that you would need to raise to support this budget that we've just talked about. If you don't make any changes, dividing the taxes by the grand list, it's 0.5149. Rounded, I would round that down again to 51 cents, um, and and that would be a six cent increase in the in the grand I mean in the tax rate, um, and I think that's around 13.3 percent. The 14.13 above there is is uh, one of the other numbers, but um, the. Uh, yeah, the $478,600 of additional taxes is 14.13% more taxes, but when you factor in a six-tenths of a percent increase in the grain list, the tax rate increase would be 13.3, I think, and 13.3 doesn't show on this page anywhere. I'm just remembering that. And then to the right there, I'm just showing that 
Um, the, uh, uh, of the $478,000, $600,000 uh, increase from one year to the next, the additional $180,000 and the $40,000 for WASI, police in WASI, is 222320 of the 478 The remaining other tax increases for the loss of, uh, loss of fund balance uh, from one year to the next and additional uh, spending that we're doing would be the other 256280 so <coughs> of the six cent tax, the, the tax rate increase um, would be about three cents for the police and a little more than three cents for the other tax increases. And that, that's just taking the, the straight taxes. Um, the percentages are a little different because the grand list is included there. So, um, <coughs> a, a, a penny on the tax rate raises about $75,000. So, you got to get about, you know, 42,500 out to drop it by a half a cent. To drop it by a penny, you got to get $75,000 out. Which I think will be hard to do. Unless you, unless you decide to cut something. It could be really argued too that the the police we were able to find that money, but really it's three eighty five, right, or three sixty five divided by seventy, so it's really five cents. Yeah, the the it's the difference from last year to right, this right, right. Year. But but ultimately it's five cents. Yes. It's just you're yes. showing the difference, I'm but just showing the difference. Yeah, but I think it's important that the public knows that that's really five cents. We're almost we're we're really raising it one penny plus plus the police budget. Look at it as a way that well, the police budget didn't if exist. To, that was in there. If you go back, sure. If you go back to 2017, yep. when we had a 45 cent tax rate, and then you skip 2018 and go to 2019, right. Right. it's 365 thousand dollars more right. for police than it was in 2017, and it's five cents. But half of it was last year, and half of it was this year. So, um, you know, it, it is. 365,000 divided by 75, it's, it's five cents of the, of the 51 cent tax rate, but to be fair, it's, it's half again. So either, you know, you can do anything you want. Oh, it's half again because, okay. Yeah, because we paid half of it last year. Yeah. Comments at all on that? Just thinking you yes. came in lower than you were expecting. Yeah, I said six to eight, so yeah. I don't see a lot of fluff in the budget. I mean, none. <laughs> I mean, Cutting seventy-five thousand dollars out of this thing would be hard. Well, I was going to continue to pick a fight over the library increase uh, for the sake of the rest of the budget, but uh, probably not worth fight. A no. fight worth picking. In total, the library's budget, the, the taxes to run the library, $51,530 in total, more than they were last year. And that's almost 12%. Their budget has gone up 2.3% from last year. Um, the 
position that they talked about when you know Dan and Almi made the presentation and what Everett talked about tonight is um, about seven twelfths the cost. It's going the same thing will happen next year to that line item as happened to the police this year. The new the new staff person is scheduled to come on in June, so we're paying that. Uh, you know, seven twelfths of the year in 2019, and then there'll be a full year's worth next year. <laughs> um, but even if you ask the library commissioners to take an additional fifty thousand dollars out of their trust to cover the fifty-one thousand dollar tax increase that they're having, you're going to save six tenths of one cent on the so the. The, the tax rate would go from, with a six-tenths of a percent increase in the grand list, the tax rate would go from 0.514 to about 0.508. And you'd still have a 51 cent tax rate because you'd round up a couple of percentage points versus down a couple. So I understand the, the concern and you know, it's. I think it's more of a philosophical concern than a than a real money in your pocket concern right now. Um, they're asking for an additional staff. They made their presentation with regard to the numbers. Um, I tend to believe their numbers are right. I understand what Everett was saying, but um, you know, circulation is is measured in different ways. It's the, the volume of things that come out. I don't remember the number of patrons that they had. Um, and if you're concerned about the staff, what you have to remember is, even if you cut their budget by $50,000, they can still hire the staff if they want. They can try to find the $50,000 somewhere else in the budget, you know, take 25 more out of their their surplus and find $25,000 worth of savings, they might still have the hire the person. And, and the law is clear that the library commissioners get to make the day, de day decision. So even if you don't think they should have the staff person, it's not really in your purview to make that decision. So is there any other comments, concerns? Not hearing much here from people. <coughs> Largest tax increase we've seen in some time. Yeah, but the stuff that's being paid for is, is pretty critical stuff. Um, it, as Nat mentioned before, there's not, there's not much to really pick apart without having, a, having an impact. I also think we were lucky to have no tax increase for three years. Mm -hmm. Well, we worked hard not to have a tax That's increase right. for three years. Well, there was some luck involved. We benefited too, from yes. having no tax <laughs> increase. It was hard work. Well, and I think we had some huge projects come on to the grand list in those years that helped in a big way. And I think that's something that I think moving forward, you know, even the conversation tonight about values in this town is that we do have to think about, you know, part of the reason the values are up is supply demand, right? So there's something to be said for, you know, as we talk about growth of this town, that the reason we were able to stay flat was the growth at the grand list. And I think we, we we need to keep that in the back of our mind that, you know, if as long as we continue in popularity, if we do nothing and we try to hinder smart growth, we could potentially be putting ourselves in a worse situation. We do need to we do need to address that to a certain degree to make sure that you know, because if supply demand doesn't keep up and we we don't we work against growth, we could potentially see increased values, but that also brings increased taxes and bringing on certain projects to address some of the residential squeezes, whether it's Airbnb 
or whatever. I just know that personally in my employees that they struggle to find affordable housing around here. And I think um, finding an affordable single family home is also another problem in this town. So I think addressing some of those issues and finding the right people that want to come in and do those those projects and, and help with those demands could potentially help you know increase grand list that increases incomes you know because I, I immediately went to incomes when I when I when we we started saying well what do we have any comments on it and you know incomes aren't keeping up with ex, ex, in, income increases aren't keeping up with in expense increases which part of it is that we voted in the police department but you know, we're, I don't think we should expect year to year that expenses aren't going to increase at a certain rate. And if we don't have grand list growth, we're going to have to expect a higher rate. So I think you know, there's, there's a balance there without getting too out of control. And I think it helps the town. Well, increased values doesn't always have to equate into increase taxes. Your tax rate is structured to service the debt. So if you can increase your values and not incur more debt, your taxes should go down. That's the way it should work. But I have yet to see it happen. We were able to stabilize at a 45 cent rate for three years through other fortunate Occurrences that assisted us in, you know, paying for what we had to pay for, do you, do you like mean, just like the pilot pilot program yeah. increasing. Do you, when you say debt, do you mean expenses or do you mean debt? Because I'm, I'm saying, I'm saying, going I'm down. saying expenses. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm yeah. To me, debt debt's is going a, down. Debt is an expense, but in in your case, yes, expenses. Okay. If you incur more expenses in the municipality. And you have to adjust the tax structure to service that debt. But if on its own, if we didn't incur any more expenses, expenses <laughs> and our debt stayed what it is, your taxes should go down, right? Yeah. <laughs> if you don't, if your expenses stay flat and your and your property values grow, your tax rate. And your taxes will go down. That's but I right. think that expenses do typically rise over time. And if you're lucky, your grand list keeps up. And, you know, I think more times than not, the grand list growth has been a little less than the inflationary growth here. Like last year, you know, inflation was 2.1%. Our grand list grew six tenths of 1% last year. There's been years where we've had three or four percent grand list growth while in the village. In the town, I think the highest I remember is about three percent. Um, but anyway. Um, so do you just need the, a motion? Well, just the one, yeah, I, I need a motion. I just want to make sure, and I'm, I'm not trying to say that we shouldn't do it. The, the only discretionary line in here is this $14,000 line in the planning yeah. department and, for and the, the change in the tax rate wouldn't even project. merit that. I mean, philosophically, I, I had objections to that because I don't think, given with the expenses we were facing, that necessarily now was the time to do it. But the amount of money we're talking about and it, it, it saves nothing, uh, and it's just a matter of throwing dirt against the wall. So, well, what about? Because I, I think there's value to doing that. Yeah, I to, think there is too, and, and I think that that's entirely appropriate. Um, my objection <coughs> is that is now the time we need to do that, and I don't know that we need to. But uh, given. The, the insignificant amount that we're talking about, um, it, it makes no sense to delay it. So I was anticipating somebody was going to want to take it out. And if you wanted to take out the 12, I was going to ask you to put three or four back in for the, the housing study if that ever came up. So the alternative is to add three or four and make that you know, 17 if it really doesn't matter one way or the other. 
I mean, I, th I think now, the you're housing, getting, now you're getting under his skin. I think the housing, <laughs> I think the housing <laughs> study is something that we should be prepared to do if, yeah. if the opportunity arises. Well, and, and to go back to an earlier uh, part of the discussion is that we, we tend not to expend everything that we've budgeted anyway. And that, that $3,000 amount, I mean, for... We for can what, find it is what you're saying? You've said that yeah. before. I've I have heard you many that. times. I have. Okay. You'll find it somewhere. So. I would agree. I think you'll find it somewhere. Would somebody like to um, make a motion? Uh, To approve the budget as presented under the scenario that will raise $478,600 additional in taxes. Is that correct, Bill? For, uh, um, I think what you might want to say is that you just, just say that you approve the general operating the, budgets. The general as operating budgets as presented, and I'll put a date on this. So uh, moved. Second from someone. Second. Any further discussion? All those who wish to approve, say aye. 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 Thank you. Another season over. <laughs> Well, kind of. The crunching is over now. The writing <laughs> right. begins. Right. <laughs> okay. What's uh, next on the agenda? Anything? Uh, I think we have to look at the warning, right? Yeah. We have version version two. We're going with version two, which, which is, is the Article Eight uh, reference to the five percent. Article Seven is wants the Article Eight tax stabilization fund. Yep. Now, the question I have with that is Article 7 with the, what we saw in here, um, the, the WASI piece had been included. Yeah, so what will happen is I'm going to, when I go back to work on this, the budget, the general operating budget right now, uh, not including the highway and the, and the library, is two million nine hundred and ten thousand dollars, and that includes all the special articles. Yep. So I'm going to take ninety-five thousand eight hundred sixty-eight dollars out. So the budget that will go before the voters will be without the special articles. So Article Seven will be the first special article, if you will. So we won't double pay them. <laughs> I was double. just wondering from a bookkeeping yeah. perspective. We won't double taxes. <laughs> Uh, Bill and I had talked about moving uh, the last article possibly to the front. What do you think about that? Other business. To do any other business? Yeah, because of what happened last year there with the. Uh, well, because everybody left gun, and then gun everything gun happened. Thing, yeah. Well, the the issue of the somebody tried to get the town meeting to approve the gun. Thing. Mm -hmm. And it, A, wasn't warned, yeah. and B, a lot of people had left. The moving it up doesn't do anything about it's not warned. They, it's right. just they oh. get to talk about it with everybody there as right. opposed to half the people going. If you want, I mean, it's certainly I mean, up to you to do that if you want. Well, people usually sit through the meeting, listen, and debate, and then may have some other stuff they want to do at the end. So you're suggesting that we don't? No, well, you could, I suppose you could do what you do on this agenda, on your select board agenda, Chris. You could just put public comment at the beginning and then keep other business at the end. And if people want to bring something up at the beginning, they could do it. Hmm. Any comments? Yes, no, maybe. It's, only su it's such a wild card thing. It really depends what happens the week before meeting that gets under somebody's bonnet and away you go. Well, so uh, 
Yeah, and um, of, of the three people that are going to see this warning in the paper and actually read it yeah. and notice that that's out of place, yeah. somebody's going to come to the meeting and still complain about it, <laughs> being in a different spot. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. You could put it, you know, you could put it right before the budget stuff if you wanted. I mean, you typically, that's not a bad idea. We typically, you know, go through and then there's a break for the Keith Wallace Award and to let the legislators talk. And if you wanted to just tell Jeff to say, you know, we've kind of taken a break in the, you don't even have to put it in there. Just tell him, look, last year we had a situation where some important things came up at the end of the meeting. They weren't here. If you have anything that you want to discuss right now before we get back to business, you can talk about that with him next week or whenever it comes in. But. That's a good idea. So it wouldn't have to be in the report or in the warning. Or in the warning. Yeah, they can't take any action anyway. I think right. you Jeff just ask Jeff to, to just say, we've taken a break for the Keith Wallace Award. The legislative, legislators have talked. Um, some of you have places to go and you can't stay to the end. Does anybody have anything you want to talk about other business now? And then we'll, we can come back <coughs> to the end too. That sounds good. It sounds Instead like, of putting it. Sounds like a natural way to deal yeah. with the issue. It doesn't call attention to it. So. Okay. So Will that work? No, I just was trying to, you know, solve an issue that occurred last year and give people a fair shake of they had other issues that the majority of the taxpayers were there to talk about it. Yeah. I think it's a good idea to move it and hope that there are more heads in the room that people don't feel like they got left out. Just so that I'm clear with this, because <laughs> we're, we're, we're talking like this, yeah. we're going to retain Article 20 at the very end anyway. Right. We're just going to have an, an interlude, an interlude, for, an an interlude for, for a conversation that will be inserted before we do the, the budget. Yeah, article. somewhere around when we do the Keith the Wallace break. Award yep. and all that stuff. Makes sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So motion to approve the warning as presented. Is that what you'd like? That's fine. I'll second that. Who made the motion? <laughs> Somebody's made gotta the make motion. the motion first. So moved. Okay. Matt, okay. Matt made the motion. Matt, then Jane. <laughs> I second. Any further discussion? All right, everybody's tired. Um, all that approve? Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. All those who approve? Aye. 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 Carla? All set? So is this the, the official signatory? What's that? This is the official yeah, you have signing. Sign the last, so we're done there. The last issue was just Quickly, a police update on the new trooper. And yeah, um, the, the new trooper has started. Uh, he's working the day shift that um, uh, Trooper Ostrop had uh, originally had, so he's working the Monday through Friday. Um, we're planning on having Lieutenant White here for a meeting on the 19th, um, so he'll be able to provide more detail on that. But uh, right now, both the troopers are in place and, and doing their work. The, uh, the new trooper uh, is uh, Keith Luya. He's actually uh, from the Stowe area. So he grew up around here. Um, I've been stationed um, down south a little bit uh, here originally and wanted to get back in the area. They did the uh, hiring and, uh, or the interview and selection process and he was really motivated to, to be back here right now. I understand he's uh, staying with family and uh, has every intent to be a uh, long-term part of our community. So. And he's young enough he'll be around for a while? Yeah, should be. Quick question on police. Do we need to be thinking about what's next and if the state has an appetite for extending that contract and when would we need to trigger that conversation? 
uh, another year or so. Um, we're, uh, we're not quite one full year into the, the three-year uh, commitment. So as far as the budget goes, uh, we, we have the half year in 18, we'll have the full year this year, we'll have the full year next year in 20, and then uh, six months into 21. So uh, in time for the, the town meeting in 2021 is when we would want to tighten up on, on any uh, renewal. Right now, the feedback has been positive from uh, both what I've heard in the community and, and what the state police report on their own, so. Have any other towns done it? I know there were a couple talking about it. No, uh, the, uh, the intent of um, the state police was to really fully uh, run it out here as a, as a beta test, and, and if it does work and is practical for expansion, there are a number of other communities that have expressed interest in it. So I, I think it would be good for those who keep long distance calendars that um, say um, spring to July of 20, we should start talking about what we want to do. So we get through this full year, get through next year's town meeting, and then after town meeting in 20, start really talking together and talking to the state about, you yeah. know. At that point, you'll have a couple of years under your belt of, of uh, uh, activity and everything and have a better sense of it. Plus, uh, there'll be the renegotiation of what the, uh, what the cost would be. The thing that should be different with that is that um, we shouldn't have to pay for a completely new outfit like we did on the original setup. There'll be more salary stuff. There'll be uh, car replacement stuff that we'll have to factor in there. But all the all the rest of the tenant and equipment uh, is already purchased. So, um, you think there's potential that it might go down if we stayed with a two trooper contract? Might not go up as much. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Noted. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's well, that's, 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 a, that's a reduction in the budget is a lower increase yep. than it is. <laughs> that's it exactly. Um, have they, just a real quick final question on this, um, have they said that they feel like two troopers right now is enough to service the town appropriately and they don't feel like they're overwhelmed by the amount of work or anything like that? Yeah, the, um, uh, what we've seen, I've, I've got the last month's uh, uh, stats that I want to pull together, but uh, our goal has been that uh, the bulk of the coverage would be provided by the troopers assigned here. Um, granted, they're only working 80 hours out of the, out of the week. Um, up until the transition in December, uh, that really was the case. Tail end of November and into December, Rick was taking some time off uh, in, in preparation for his retirement and everything. So there was more coverage by the Middlesex troopers than uh, the local troopers. But now that uh, we've got two, two folks back online, I would expect that the January one would show that shift back again. Yeah, and I think, I think the other thing, too, to remember is that um, you know, m maybe the two have higher caseloads than, and if you had a third person, they'd each have a few less cases. But in, I think in terms of the global state police view of it, um, it's taking a lot of burden off oh. what Middlesex was doing before. Yeah, and, and that's the uh, kind of the acid test, is that it's making the troopers at Middlesex happy that somebody is here uh, covering that caseload. And uh, again, until we got into later November and, and December, winter time tends to slow down a little bit for activities. Um, the first few months, we <coughs> average roughly around 100 calls for service a month. Um, it's, it's been down in the 80 range in November and December, but Again, that's, that's weather-driven and, and the like, but uh, it's, 
It's a consistency. Criminals yeah. come out more when it's well, good weather. Huh? And that's why I never would want to do that line of work in a warm climate. Because you never get the winter break. There's no downtime, huh? Yeah. Um, but I think the point was, does it seem like two, can we sense yet if two troopers is adequate for that number of calls? Yeah, the, uh, the, Predictable the, the good fortune for us is that when they require any sort of supplementation or assistance, uh, the, They're the, nearby. Yeah, the main station is just a couple of miles down the road. So that's, in the world of state police, that's, that's golden. Right. It's, uh, it, it's only a 10 or 15 minute response as opposed to the half hour, 45 minutes that you get in a lot of places. And I, and I, think, I think what we should be more worried about, and it's not that I'm concerned that the two troopers might have a heavy caseload, we're paying the state for that. I think the measurement that we want to look at is do we have people in the community who feel that they're not getting the service that they that they need? And, I, and so far, everything I hear is good, that, yeah. that people see the troopers driving by, just patrolling. When they call, they, they, they get answered, they, they come. And it's not like, you know, nobody's picking up the phone and calling me and saying, hey, you know, I called the state police last week and they still haven't gotten back to me, you know? And I, I had one, one the resident that was actually teed off because he got pulled over and he couldn't believe that, you know, <laughs> why, what do we need a police department for? <laughs> yeah. He only got a warning, but uh, yeah, he was pretty, pretty ticked off there that he even got pulled over. He was in a rush to go to work and uh, um, anyway. Before you adjourn, um, I would recommend if it's all right with you that you have a meeting scheduled for next week, which is the first Monday in February, and we've met for f four weeks in a row, I think. Nothing on the agenda. And there's really nothing. Uh, so the the next meeting would was supposed to be on February 18th, which would be President's Day. So we would propose that we meet on Tuesday the 19th. Okay. Fine. And. Um, Bill, when we had talked about this or earlier, having uh, Lieutenant White join us, I guess there'd been a request to perhaps schedule that meeting at six as opposed to seven. He had asked for earlier, but there was something okay. in an email that you asked. I, I didn't know if that was a, a standing request or if it was only because it was supposed to be of on that. a certain day. So yeah, I'll, I'll let you that. reach out to him and figure it out, okay? Yeah. So the potential is we might be earlier, um, but. Otherwise, the 19th is looking good. Great. You don't need a motion for that. Uh, I think you should just you should make a motion to cancel your meeting scheduled for February 4th, 4th and that you'll meet next on the 19th at an appointed time to be determined later. You don't have to say all that, but so moved. Is there that you go. The I'll second that. Okay. All those in favor? Say aye. 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 Motion to adjourn. So moved. <laughs> Second. All those approve? Aye. 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 aye.